Good evening, and uh, welcome to our public hearing uh, this evening, June 4th, 2018. The purpose of this public hearing is to uh, discuss the proposed budget and millage rates. Um, Mrs. Bonifield, would you take the roll, please? Mrs. Bradford? Here. Mrs. Burton? Here. Mr. Centers? Here. Mrs. Frank is absent. Mrs. Jarvis? Here. Mrs. Bonifield is here. President Johnson? Here. We have a quorum. Thank you. And uh, I'll turn it over to Mrs. Smith. Thank you very much. It's my privilege to go with the, over with the board and the public on our proposed budget for the 2018-19 school year, as well as the proposed millage rates. So uh, before we look at 2018-19, we'll take a minute to look at 2017-18. We started this school year with a fund balance of $16.7 million, and we anticipate an ending fund balance this year of $19.9 .9 million, or 12.8%. That will be what the savings we have to start the 18-19 school year with. Um, I'm anticipating revenues of $154.2 million and expenditures of $155.3 million which would leave us with an ending fund balance of $18.8 .8 million or 12.2% come June 30th, 2019. And on the next slide, we'll get into some of the details. Uh, the 2018-19 proposed budget includes the following revenue adjustments, an overall decrease in state revenue of $1.8 million. This does include the $128 per pupil increase in foundation allowance, but unfortunately we are anticipating an enrollment decrease, so this helps offset our enrollment decrease. We also have some uh, changes in other categorical funding, including the Section 147, which ha has to do with the uh, retirement contributions. There is also a $700,000 overall increase in other financing sources, and this is uh, due to the sale of property and also an adjustment in the incoming transfers from the Special Education Fund. Um, on the expenditure side, uh, we have additional supports that were discussed in detail at the May 21st committee meeting, and we did go into a lot of detail, so if anybody uh, listening is interested to hear more of those details, I recommend going back and either watching or listening to the May 21st committee meeting. Uh, the 1819 budget also includes, includes pay raises based on our collective bargaining agreements, changes in employer retirement contributions, uh, increase in insurance costs, the transfer of athletic expenditures and revenue to the general fund. And I did want to point out that this is not uh, an increase to the athletic expenditures. It's simply a, an accounting change, moving it from the athletic fund, um, now incorporating into the general fund. And we won't lose the detail. We'll continue, continue to see athletic uh, expenditures, but it will be broken down out under the support services line on the general fund budget. Um, the only adjustment we've made for the athletic uh, expenditures are the addition of the bowling teams and uh, lacrosse teams at our high schools. Uh, our 1819 budget also includes a decrease in transfer to other funds and lastly, a savings from retirement. Uh, we have more than just the general fund. We also keep other separate funds as required by law. Um, Here's a list of them. And uh, next, before we look at the millage rates, we need to look at what our property taxes are. So that helps us determine what amount of uh, tax rate needs to be levied in order to collect the revenue we need to meet our needs in the coming school year. So uh, taxable values, I am so sorry. I'm, I have 2017 taxable values. These are 2018 taxable values, my apologies. Um, overall, total taxable values in the Livonia Public Schools area is 4.4 billion. This is up 0.2 billion from 2017, which helps us um, because we're able to levy less taxes uh, and yet still meet the needs. So we'll see that on the next page, a breakout. Um, you won't see a change uh, in the uh, general fund that 18 mills and the six mills on commercial personal property. The reason you don't see a decrease there, uh, the state assumes that we're going to be collecting the 18 mills and the six mills. So when we talk about the foundation allowance, they will back out um, the 18 mills and six mills. So uh, we will get the net of that. Um, where we do see a reduction is in the debt retirement funds in both the 2013 bond series one and series two. Um, last year we levied one excuse me, we levied um, 0.34 mills 
more, so we were able to lower that and still um, have enough revenue to meet our debt service payments. And also on the 2014 uh, refunding, we levied two mills last year, and that's down to 1.9 mills. So thankfully, we are in a, you know, our city is um, doing very well. Property taxes are increasing, so that has a positive effect, again, on the amount of uh, mills that we need to levy. Uh, lastly on here is the sinking fund. Last year we levied 1.1157, and uh, due to the rollback, we're now leveling leveling 1.1142, and yet that does uh, bring us slightly more revenue, projected revenue this year as opposed to last year because of the increased property tax values. With that, I will open it up. If anybody has any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Are there any yeah. questions or comments from the board? I, I just have uh, one question. The sinking fund millage rate has gone down. Is that right? That is correct. That's due to the increase of the property tax values. There's the Headley rollback uh, requirement that um, requires us to take a look at uh, the levy, and your taxes can't be raised uh, that much, I guess. So because the t property tax values went up, we had to uh, lower the amount of uh, levy. So it what and what you'll see it's lower levy. So on the personal side, uh, as a personal residence, you'll see that the sinking fund uh, amount collected has gone down. But overall, for the district, again, because our property taxes got, have gone up, we're going to see a little additional revenue for our sinking fund. Okay, thank you. So ultimately, we'll see a decrease in the property taxes our residents are paying. Correct. Based on these these new levies. Correct. Okay, thank okay, you. Great. Any other questions or comments? Just so that everyone understands, the public hearing we required by law to, to have that. And if you uh, have a stomach to stay around, for the rest of our meeting, you'll see that we will be addressing these items uh, later on in our regular meeting. Okay. So that will move us to item three, audience communication. Um, I do not have any blue slips. If anyone wanted to address the board on this issue, uh, we have blue slips outside uh, to the right side of the door. Uh, I don't see anybody rushing to get a blue slip. I'm going to assume that there are not going to be any uh, audience communication, which will then move us to item uh, four. Is there any other business to be brought on the public hearing? If not, we will adjourn, and we will be back shortly to begin our regular meeting. Thank you. Good evening, and we're back again. Uh, this is going to be our regular meeting, or what we call our voting meeting, uh, of the Board of Education for June 4th, 2018. Uh, Mrs. Bonifield, would you take the roll, please? Mrs. Bradford? Here. Mrs. Burton? Here. <coughs> Mr. Centers? Here. Mrs. Frank is absent. Mrs. Jarvis? Here. Mrs. Bonifield is here. President Johnson? Here. We have a quorum. Mrs. Bradford, would you lead us in the pledge, please? Yes, of course. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you again, and welcome to our uh, regular voting meeting. This is uh, the, the meeting where we uh, we'll vote on uh, various items. Uh, you may not see the level of discussion tonight on items because the items that are being brought before the board have already been discussed at least twice before, once at a study session and then once at our Committee of the Whole. It's at the Committee of the Whole we, where we do a lot of discussion and determine whether or not those items are ready to be brought for, before the board for a vote. Uh, so if you really want to watch that discussion, you can tune into our committee meetings, which are on our website, and they go back uh, quite a ways. Um, if you are in the audience and you want to follow along with our agenda, you can get an agenda outside the door to the left and then turn to the right, and they're on the table, and you can follow along. For those of you who may be watching at home, you can go to our website, which is found at LavoniaPublicSchools.org. You can highlight over the board tab, and you'll see agenda, and you can follow along with us. Uh, we have a lot of uh, good things going on tonight uh, under our uh, communications, which is item three. Uh, we have a lot of folks here. We have a full house. Uh, so we're going to get right to it. Uh, so we'll go to item 3A, communications. 
Uh, recognition of National Merit Scholars. Mrs. Jenkins. Thank you. Good, good evening, President Johnson, members of the board, Superintendent Oquist. Tonight, it is my pleasure to recognize a special group of 10 students who have excelled in the National Merit Scholar Program. The students you are about to meet have scored in the top 1% out of approximately 1.5 million students nationwide on the PSAT National Merit Scholarship Qualifying Exam. We should also note that tonight we're not only recognizing this achievement, we can also congratu congratulate them on their graduation from LPS as commencement ceremonies. As you know, you are all taking part uh, over the weekend, uh, this past weekend. So congratulations to all of our students on graduation. At this time, I'd like to tell you um, a little bit about each student one by one, and I will go in alphabetical order. We have 10 total. First, let's welcome Joseph Choma to the podium, Joseph. In each student, we have a special certificate, which reads Livonia Public <coughs> Schools Certificate of Recognition, Outstanding Achievement, National Merit Scholarship Finalist, uh, selected by the National Merit Scholarship Corporation for Outstanding Academic Success and Personal Growth in Social and Leadership Endeavors. And the, the certificate is dated June 4th, 2018, and signed by Superintendent Oquist and Mr. Dan Wollenborg, who is the Director of Secondary Programs. So there you are, but don't go anywhere. I'm gonna talk about you for a moment. <laughs> uh, Joseph is a Stevenson High School graduate. How does that sound? Are you used to that idea yet? <laughs> yeah, that's true. Uh, with a um, 4.49 grade point average and an SAT score of 1540. At Stevenson, he was involved in the Biology Lab Aquarium Club, the Greenhouse Club, the Games Club, Quiz Bowl, and he served as a student tutor. He plans uh, to attend Schoolcraft College and will study natural sciences. He is the son of Dean and Linda Choma and brother of Jacob. <coughs> Congratulations, Joseph. Next up, we welcome Rachel Christofferson. Rachel? Hi, Rachel. Here's your certificate. Rachel is a graduate of Churchill High School, where she was in the MSc program. She earned a 4.6 GPA and a 1560 on the SAT. Rachel is, the is also um, our only recipient in the district of the National Merit Scholarship. At Churchill, she was a writer for the Char Ch uh, Charger Herald. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, a member of the Quiz Bowl team, National Honor Society, and the CHS Key Club. She has studied piano for 12 years and composes her own music. Rachel plans to attend Cornell University to major in biological sciences with a concentration in neurology and behavior. Uh, she is the daughter of Andrew and Laurel and sister of Hannah, Emma, and Claire. Congratulations. <laughs> Next up, help me welcome Kevin Dunn. Kevin, certificate. You. You're welcome. Uh, Kevin is a graduate of Stevenson High School, where he earned a 4.33 grade uh, GPA and a 1540 on his SAT and a 34 on the ACT. 36 is perfect, isn't it? I think. <laughs> um, at Stevenson, Kevin was captain of the boys' tennis team. He was part of the uh, theater tech team in the new Performing Arts Center. He served on Student Senate, National Honor Society was in the Global Lead Program, and was involved in the Mid-American Model United Nations. Kevin plans to attend Michigan State University to major in chemistry and material science. He is the son of Patrick and Maureen, and brother of Jack, Tom, and Steve. Congratulations, Kevin. <laughs> Next, we welcome Mackenzie Darnell, Darnell to the podium, Mackenzie. There you go. 
Mackenzie is a graduate of Churchill High School where she earned a 4.52 GPA, a 14.90 on the SAT, and a 34 on the ACT. Um, Mackenzie participated all four years in math, science, and computers program and the Kappa dance program at Churchill. She was a member of the uh, National Honor Society, the National Honor Society for Dance Arts, and the National Art Honor Society. I think she had all of the honor societies covered. Uh, Mackenzie has also been involved in dance for 15 years and has uh, served as an academic tutor at Churchill. She plans to attend the University of Michigan Ann Arbor where she will study biological science sciences on the pre-medical track. She is the daughter of Joe and Brenda and sister of Mylan. Congratulations. <laughs> Next up, uh, let's welcome William Gardner. Okay, William is a graduate of Churchill High School where he had, uh, earned a 4.59 GPA and an SAT score of 1570. At Churchill, he was also in the MSC program, was in the uh, mar marching band, jazz band, and the brass ensemble, and he is also an Eagle Scout. William plans to attend Purdue University to study aerospace engineering. He is the son of Greg and Kim and brother of Stephanie. Congratulations. <laughs> Next, let's welcome Scott Goutman. There you go, Scott. Thank you. You're welcome. Scott is a graduate of Churchill High School, where he was in, also in the MSC program. We're seeing a trend here. Uh, he scored a 1540 on his SAT and a near-perfect 35 on the ACT. Scott served as the editor of the Charger, Charger Herald, was the quid, Quiz Bowl captain and MVP. He was a senior, vice, senior class vice president and founding member of the and first treasurer of the CHS Key Club. He was, uh, he was also on the student council and was involved in success strategies. Scott plans to attend the University of Michigan Ann Arbor to study aerospace engineering. He hopes to someday work for NASA. He is the son of <laughs> Philip and Elizabeth. <laughs> Next up, we welcome Michael Otaki. Michael is a graduate of Churchill High School, uh, where he was in the MSc program. He earned a 4.5 GPA, uh, scored a 1550 on the SAT, and was involved in many extracurriculars at Churchill. Those include, uh, included varsity tennis, varsity golf, varsity baseball, National Honor Society, as well as the Spanish National Honor Society. He was a mentor in the Success Strategies program, participated in the Quiz Bowl, and served as a student council class representative. Michael plans to attend the University of Michigan Ann Arbor to major in computer science. He is the son of Tad and Ann and the brother, brother of Tim and Christopher. <laughs> Next up, we, we welcome Antara Raul. Tara is, there you are, also a graduate of Churchill High School and was also in the MSc program. Uh, she earned a 4.2 GPA and scored a 1550 on the a SAT. At Churchill, Antara was a member of the CHS Key Club. She was a success strategies tutor and was in the French National Honor Society. Antara plans to attend Wayne State University to major in pharmacy and health sciences. She is the daughter of Swati and Viraj and sister of Eshin. Congratulations. Okay, moving right along. Next up, we welcome Mary Silvio. There you are. 
Mary is a Stevenson High School graduate who earned a 4.6 GPA and a 1540 on the SAT. At Stevenson, Mary, Mary was um, in the National Honor Society as well as the French National Honor Society. She was on the Student Senate and Class Council and served as Class President. She was also the director of the Pantomime Show. It's a very popular production. Uh, Mary plans to attend the University of Michigan Ann Arbor and is undecided on a major at this time. She is the daughter of Dawn and Michael Silvio. Congratulations. <laughs> Last but certainly not least, we welcome Logan Welch to the podium. There you go, Logan. Thank you. You're welcome. Logan is a graduate of Churchill High School, where he was in the MSc program. He earned a 4.5 GPA and a 1550 on the SAT. At Churchill, Logan was involved in the CHS Quiz Bowl, Success Strategies, National Honor Society, and the Key Club. He also played tennis and he served, served as the captain of the golf team. Logan plans to attend Stanford University where he will major in biomedical engineering. He is the son of Andre and Lori Welch and brother of Peyton. Uh -huh. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for being here. Join me in congratulating all of these national <laughs> leaders. Questions or comments from the board? Uh, I just want to say that obviously um, all these students are very intelligent, but it also takes a tremendous amount of grit and uh, perseverance to get to this point. So uh, congratulations to all of you. Uh, we're always so impressed with uh, our students, and uh, this is ex uh, definitely no exception and very, very impressive. So thank you and for being here, and congratulations. Absolutely. Yeah. Mrs. Jarvis. Thank you, President Johnson. I've had the happy privilege of knowing most of these people, these young people, um, since they were second or third graders. And I can tell you that not only have they always been sharp, and always at the top of their game. But more importantly, they are genuinely kind, nice people. And that's a wonderful thing to see. Congratulations to each of you. Mrs. Oakless. Thank you. I just wanted to um, just once again congratulate these remarkable students. It was wonderful um, to celebrate you at Honors Night and at your commencements. and. How great for each of you to be here this evening and to spend the time um, to be recognized in this way. One of the things I, I noted, in addition to the tremendous academic prowess that you, that you clearly have shown, um, is so many of you are involved in service organizations as well. Um, so many of you are involved in either service back to your school, back to your community, um, involved in other academics, athletics, arts. Um, and what a, what a wonderful tribute that is to you to be able to manage not only all of those academic, rigorous academic expectations, but to also spend your time giving back to others. I wanted to thank Mr. Etu for being here this evening. I'm sure you're celebrating all of your students. Mr. Coates, um, who is the MSC coordinator and educator of many of these students. I don't know if I'm missing anyone else as far as um, the teachers or um, administrators working and then also thank you to each of you the families I am certain you are very very proud and I'm certain you were also a big part in their success so thank you you know what impressed me was the array of colleges and universities you're gonna go to Stanford Cornell U of M I mean that's that's the top of the the list folks uh, they're lucky to get you and you're gonna go on to great things thank you okay that will move us to item B recognition of gymnastics state championship uh, I think I need a motion on this president Johnson 
Mrs. Burton. Move that the Board of Education of the Livonia Public Schools School District adopt the attached resolution recognizing Stevenson High School gymnast Anissa Conway for capturing the 2018 Michigan High School Athletic Association Division I State Championship title in the Uneven Bars event. Support. We have a motion by Mrs. Burton supported by Mrs. Bradford. And I did want to uh, mention one thing. We're going to take a short break after item 3G to recognize our uh, award winners tonight and uh, some other folks who will be recognized. So I just wanted to uh, let you know. Mrs. Jenkins. Okay. Thank you, President Johnson. Uh, once again, our Livonia pride has shown brightly across the state of Michigan as a hometown <coughs> LPS athlete excelled to the pinnacle of her sport. Tonight, we are recognizing and congratulating Ms. Anissa Conway on her incredible performance at the Michigan High School Athletic Association Division I Gymnastics State Championship, which was held in Rockford, Michigan. Anissa, will you please join me at the podium? Anissa is a junior at Stevenson High School and a second year member of the Livonia Blue Gymnastics team under the brilliant guidance of Coach Lisa Broomfield. Uh, Coach Broomfield was not able to join us this evening, but we do have uh, Ms. Lori Hyman, the Stevenson High School Athletic Director, who has joined us this evening. Uh, Anissa earned a state title on the uneven bars during the state championship with a score of 9.400. She surely turned a lot of heads at the meet with this, with this score. And as you'll hear from the resolution that we've prepared, this was not her only achievement in Rockford. We will hear more about this in just a moment. But first, let's recognize that we cannot underestimate the amount of time, talent, energy, skill, and perseverance it takes to reach the height of any sport, particularly while juggling schoolwork with count countless hours of practice. Just the drive that it takes to improve on your last performance the mental toughness it takes to um, remain focused and remain confident are just some of the impressive skills required to earn the title of a state champion. At this time, I'd like to invite Board Vice President Colleen Burton to join us at the podium, and Mrs. Burton will read a special resolution that we've prepared for you. Congratulations. Thank you. Watching what gymnasts do, even just at a beginner level, is, is pretty amazing, uh, let alone to watch state finals. And to have you uh, capture the championship is truly remarkable. The resolution from the Board of Education reads, whereas the trustees of the Livonia Public Schools School District Board of Education are desirous of publicly recognizing the outstanding accomplishments of students who distinguish themselves during the pursuit of their public education in the school district. And whereas Anissa Conway, a junior at Stevenson High School, has distinguished herself by achieving the 2018 Michigan High School Athletic Association Division I Gymnastics State Championship title on the uneven bars. And whereas in achieving this honor, Anissa captured this title with a score of 9.400. And whereas this adds to the outstanding accomplishments Anissa has achieved this season as a member of the Livonia Blue Gymnastics team, including setting a school record in floor exercise with a score of 9.725, as well as placing third in the state in the all-around event with a score of 36.450, and placing fourth in the state in floor exercise with a score of 9.450. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the trustees of the Board of Education do hereby commend and congratulate Anissa Conway for her outstanding accomplishments in athletics and wish her well in her future endeavors as she applies the discipline and perseverance needed to excel in sports to all areas of her life. Congratulations. Questions or comments from the Board? To commemorate the occasion, would you like to try a handstand, Mr. Johnson? <laughs> <laughs> Not on your life, Mr. Yeah. Senator. <laughs> Thank you. Congratulations. 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 What a wonderful Congratulations. accomplishment. Yes. Truly. All right, that will move us to item uh, three. Oh, we need a. Uh, we
we need to vote. Oh, we need to vote. Mm -hmm. Mrs. Uh, Bonifield, would you take the roll, please? Mrs. Burton? Yes. Mrs. Bradford? Yes. Mr. Saunders? Yes. Mrs. Frank? Oh, I'm sorry. Mrs. Jarvis? Yes. Mrs. Bonifield says yes. President Johnson? Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. Uh, that'll take us now to item 3C, the Golden Apple Award. Mrs. Jenkins. Okay. Thank you, President Johnson. Tonight we are adding to our 2017-2018 Orchard of Golden Apples. The Golden Apple Award is issued to those who go above and beyond that, that which is expected, doing so with exceptional care, concern, and a genuine passion to improve the school atmosphere for our students and our staff. Tonight's Golden Apple Award goes to Mr. Jeff Graham, a 22-year-old, 20, not 22-year-old. <laughs> I know he's not 22. We graduated from high school together. Um, a 22-year LPS employee and graduate of Franklin High School. Let's give Jeff a hand as he makes his way to the podium. I'm going to brag about you a little bit, okay? Just hold tight. <laughs> uh, Jeff Graham has been the building supervisor at Roosevelt Elementary for the past 10 years and was at Johnson Upper Elementary prior to that. The Golden Apple nomination was pages long which was a summary of input from numerous staff members at Roosevelt. And I noticed you have a fan club back here equipped with sign. They came with signage and everything. Yeah. <laughs> um, just as we have heard about other Golden Apple recipients who t take care of our schools, Jeff is considered to be the go-to guy at Roosevelt. He cares for the building as if it were his own home, and he cares for the students as if they were his own children. The following is a summary of the summary from the nomination <laughs> form. Jeff does, uh, so I have some bullet points here, so I'll just kind of go through each one. Um, Jeff does not let his job description of the building, of building supervisor limit what he does for Roosevelt. He integrates himself into the culture at the school by modeling the community with character traits on a daily basis, being a leader and a positive example by going above and beyond. For example, Jeff can often be heard over the PA doing, some mor doing the morning announcements or leading students through the pledge. He was even caught singing the Franklin fight song over the PA when I believe it was when the Franklin football was at the state championship. <laughs> um, he volunteers to oversee the Roosevelt family movie night. He works uh, recess duty every day. He delivers scholastic book orders to classrooms and serves as a guest reader during March's reading month. I also happen to know, based on Facebook updates, that he uh, cares for a mama duck and her little ducklings in the courtyard, um, and he's created quite an oasis out there for the, for the little family. This is a yearly occurrence, isn't it? Yes, it is. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mama duck, yeah. or you don't know? Same mama, and I think the, the kids come. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's a generational thing at this point. Um, according to his colleagues, uh, Jeff is friendly to everyone and takes the time to get to know students and parents. For example, there, were, um, there are two fourth grade boys who looked up to Mr. Graham so much that they asked if they could help him uh, with emptying the recycling bins during recess. Jeff immediately agreed and took them under his wing, serving as a positive role model. For students who, uh, for students who need an extra pat on the back or a word of encouragement, Mr. Graham is always there. He keeps the Roosevelt environment clean, safe, and welcoming, and is high energy um, has a, and has a his high energy has a, high, a positive impact on the school. Taking care of the building is his main responsibility, and he does this with great attention to detail, whether it's grass cutting, snow removal, or cleaning the dozens of rooms and common areas throughout the school. He has a mindset that only focuses on the solution, not on the problem. So that concludes the bulleted, some of the bulleted remarks, and there were many, many more. Um, there is so much more that's listed in the nomination, but we think you get the idea that mm -hmm. Jeff Graham is as good as it gets. Principal Bill Green said, our, our school district has always stressed teaming together. Truly, Jeff lives this day in and day out for Livonia Public Schools and for our Roosevelt Tigers. At this time, I'd like to ask uh, Board Secretary Tammy Bonifield to join us at the podium to present the Golden Apple Award. also a little golden apple pin here. Okay, put it right on your shirt. Look at that. Mm -hmm. 
Sharp. Sharp. Okay. Congratulations. Thank you. I have just a few more words to say okay. about you. Um, uh, one of the another bullet point is a fourth grade teacher recalls when she and her students would always say, "If anyone can do it, Mr. Graham can." <laughs> we all believe and know it's true. He is always willing to help in any way he can. He often says. Just let me know, and we'll make it happen. He's dependable, friendly, helpful, and active part of the Roosevelt community. Mr. Graham is an everyday hero who makes a crucial difference in our children's lives. We, the Roosevelt community, are lucky to have him here with us. Jeff is like a DC comic character from Justice League. He is <laughs> Roosevelt's very own superhero. Aww. So we can't thank you enough. Thank you. Aww. Well, I was told that I should say a few things, and I definitely want to. I want to thank the board for recognizing me with this golden apple, uh, Superintendent Oakwist. My wonderful staff that I work with, they are tremendous. They make it easy for me as well because they're just as friendly as you guys say that I am, and I appreciate it. I thank my dad for coming today. My brother Lenny from J Johannesburg up north even drove down to surprise me. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. And my uh, nephew, uh, so I appreciate it. I have been in Livonia my whole life. I haven't gone anywhere. Um, I, I started off um, at, uh, at Cle or at, I'm sorry, at Hoover. I went to Cleveland, I went to Johnson, and I thank uh, um, Ms. DePero for hiring me as the building supervisor. And I look forward to many more years in Livonia. It's a great district, and I appreciate having this great job. Thank you awesome. very much. Any questions or comments from the board? Did we invite the Jeff Graham fan club to stand and, yeah. and uh, Absolutely. show all that are here to support him tonight? Wow. I think that certainly speaks volumes. Yeah. Just, yes. an, sure. just another example of what makes this district so great. Yes. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Thank you all for being here. And I believe it was an all-staff nomination. Is that correct? Yes, it was. Yes. Yes. Well, thank you so much. All right, that will take us to item 3D, gift from Amazon. And I believe I need a motion. President Johnson. Mrs. Bradford. Move that the Board of Education of the Livonia Public Schools School District accept the generous $10,000 donation from Amazon to Frost Middle School for the purchase of STEM, science, technology, engineering, and math equipment for the school's makerspace. Support. We have a motion by Mrs. Bradford, supported by Ms., uh, Mrs. Burton. Mrs. Jenkins. Hey, thank you, President Johnson. Um, I believe it was this time last year that I stood before you describing the ins and outs of a makerspace. Mm -hmm. um, at that time, we were highlighting the amazing space that was created for students to explore at Cooper Upper Elementary. Since then, the makerspace concept has continued to catch on throughout the district. As a refresher, a makerspace is a designated area that is filled with items, whether those are uh, craft supplies, um, it could be bags of items that were discarded from manufacturing facilities, um, scraps, scrap, scrappy type materials, um, or items that use technology to stretch the brain and spark creativity in our students. In a makerspace, it's all about making, and it's all about creating and making connections. Uh, the item I bring before you tonight has helped propel the makerspace at Frost Middle School into the next dimension. A $10,000 donation from Amazon has provided the Frost Makerspace with so many cool STEM-related items. Those related to, as was stated in the, mo in, in the motion, related to science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. It's almost unbelievable. When Amazon approached the district with this donation, we were simply in awe. Just a couple of weeks ago, we were able to celebrate with many of you in attendance uh, the grand reopening of the Frost Makerspace. At this event, you were able to check out the 3D printer as it meticuli meticulously whirled, a, uh, created a plastic vessel as the, the fibers spun. And by the end of our event, it, the vessel was almost halfway created. It was so neat to watch. 
Um, you also saw the green screen technology that enabled the students to transpose their photos onto an, um, other old time photos with icons such as Albert Einstein and uh, Thomas Edison. You saw a dash, well several little dashes, um, cute little robots in action as students navigated them with tablets. And you saw <coughs> virtual reality technology via the goggles that once you put them on dropped you right in the middle of right into the middle of the ocean. Other items that were purchased with this donation include a laser cutter, um, a vinyl a vinyl cutter as well, <coughs> a, um, some technology to create heat transfers to make t-shirts, and much more. The Frost staff, particularly media specialist Brian Chinovar, did a great job in selecting the items and setting everything up so the students could start exploring right away. Joining us this evening is Frost Assistant Principal Shannon Wheeler and Mr. Chinovar. Um, I'm going to call them up in just a moment. As with all of the gifts of this size, we would like to publicly thank Amazon for being such a great corporate neighbor of our schools. And they just moved in, which is great. Mm -hmm. um, Amazon reps were not able to join us this evening, but we will be sure to get this certificate of appreciation to them. And it reads, Livonia Public Schools Certificate of Appreciation to Amazon for the $10,000 donation for to purchase STEM technology for the makerspace at Frost Middle School. So at this time, I'd like to in invite Mrs. Wheeler and Mr. Shinovar, and they can tell you a bit more about how exciting this donation has been for Frost. They're way in the back. Good evening. Hi. Good evening. <laughs> Thanks for being here. Yeah, no problem. Um, as um, Stacy said, we. Uh, we've really turned our library in Livonia, or all the, well, let me start over. <laughs> One of the main goals of all the librarians in Livonia is to engage students in a way that is like, <coughs> unlike the classroom teachers do. So um, a couple years ago, Judy Bowling really took off with her makerspace, and I wanted to follow her lead. And uh, another librarian that works in Livonia, Tara Hillary, gave me a hand painting the walls of my office, uh, making spaces for kids to be able to make stuff. And uh, it's it's designed to engage kids in a way that they don't normally get. So, for example, Colin Wynn, a student of ours, came into our library the other day, and uh, we hadn't we hadn't uh, printed anything practical yet on our 3D printer. In fact, I'm just learning how to use a 3D printer myself. So, um, he said he had a file and he wanted to print something. So I said, "Well, let's do it." And uh, he put a file into the printer. Uh, it started to work, and about an hour and a half later. He had printed a, uh, a replacement mouthpiece for his French horn. So that's the first practical thing we've built, but his eyes lit up when he saw it. Wow. My yeah. eyes lit up when I saw it too, because <laughs> you know they had, the printer had sample items to print, and so we printed those. But to see a kid actually go find something, put it to you, create it, put it to use, I think that in a lot of students' minds, that can really make a big difference for their engagement in school. Yeah. So there's just this is a complete game changer for many kids whether you're at the top of academic um, achievement or somewhere in the middle or down near the bottom. I've seen lots of curious faces in the library that I haven't seen for uh, you know, the last year and a half. Some kids just never make it to the library. Some strangers are starting to show up and they're excited about learning <laughs> something new. So it's kind of neat. So thank you. Good evening for the board, uh, Superintendent Oquest, uh, actually, and Cabinet. I, I just want to say thank you on behalf of Frost Middle School uh, for allowing us to accept this gift. Uh, Brian is right. Uh, we've printed many things. Uh, we have a pig, and we have a frog, and we have lots of things on this 3D printer, uh, but kids are excited about it, which always, that's, that's what we're here for. Mm -hmm. So to see that and for Frost to be able to offer that to them is something that's really an experience in our district that is the only one. Uh, I do have to thank Brian and the PTSA for making that makerspace what it is. That would not have happened were it not for all of their hard work. So we're very happy to have it at Frost, and we're very thankful for your support. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Questions or comments from the board? Mrs. Oquist. 
I just wanted to um, just once again acknowledge Mr. Shinovar for uh, when he started the Makerspace, it was not with a $10,000 gift from Amazon. Uh, it was from uh, bits and pieces here and there um, in a vision of what he wanted to create for the students at Frost. And it started out uh, relatively modest, but yet pretty engaging uh, how, it, how it stood. And uh, so we were thrilled to have the support of Amazon to really grow that area into something that is quite remarkable. If you have an opportunity um, to visit, I know you would certainly be impressed. Um, the Frost Administration, the staff, the PTA have truly embraced this opportunity to provide um, an, a, a really engaging and innovative area for our students to explore. Um, and we are thrilled to see that. So thank you, Mr. Shinovar, and to uh, the entire team at Frost, Mr. Abate, Mrs. Wheeler, and all of your colleagues. Thank you, Mrs. Oquist. Other questions or comments from the board? No. Seeing none, we have a motion to accept the uh, donation from Amazon. This is uh, Bonifield, would you take the roll, please? Mrs. Bradford? Yes. Mrs. Burton? Yes. Mr. Centers? Yes. Mrs. Jarvis? Yes. Mrs. Bonifield says yes. President Johnson? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you again to Amazon. And mm -hmm. I'm, I'm sure Mr. Shinovar gave up a little of his space so that uh, <laughs> this could be instituted, and we appreciate that. All right, that will take us to item 3E, approval of resolution in recognition of Michigan PTA Centennial. May I have a motion, please? President Johnson. Mrs. Jarvis. Move that the Board of Education of the Livonia Public Schools School District <laughs> adopt the attached resolution recognizing the 100th anniversary of the Michigan Parent Teacher Association. Support. We have a motion by Mrs. Uh, Jarvis, supported by Mr. Centers. Mrs. Jenkins. Oh, hello again. Thank you, President Johnson. Uh, where would our schools be without our PTAs? Livonia Public Schools boasts one of the highest memberships in the state, and we know we are so fortunate to have so many involved parents who are willing to put their hearts and souls into our schools. Our PTAs organize school-wide events that create lasting memories for our students and families. They provide special treats and meals during Staff Appreciation Week. And with that, they, did you know they even compete between the schools to see which school can out-treat the other? I thought that was kind of interesting. Uh, we are fortunate to have vi uh, vibrant participation in Youth Making a Difference, Founders Day Celebration, and the Reflections Program each year. The list goes on to include one of our very own member, uh, members of the Board of Education, Mrs. Liz Jarvis, who serves on the Michigan PTA as Secretary Treasurer. So it should come as no surprise that Livonia Public Schools would like to recognize the 100th anniversary of the Michigan PTA. At this time, I'd like to invite Trustee Jarvis to join me at the podium in reading a special <laughs> resolution into the record. I should note that Michigan uh, PTA President Sybil Wilson, was un she thought she was going to be able to join us uh, this evening, but she's unable to attend due to illness, so we do wish her well. Thank you. I'd like to give a shout out to President Wilson, and who is currently recovering from surgery. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'd ask that everyone send some warm thoughts her way for a speedy recovery. I apologize, this resolution is a little bit lengthy, but we only do this once every 100 years. <laughs> Whereas the Michigan Parent Teacher Association has acted locally, regionally, and nationally in supporting family engagement and working on behalf of all children and families, it is a time to reflect and take pride in its numerous accomplishments and celebrate 100 years of being a powerful voice for all children, a trusted resource for parents, and a strong advocate for public education. And whereas the Michigan PTA has been instrumental in establishing programs and services to improve children's lives, including, but not limited to, advancing parent and family engagement, the creation of kindergarten, advancing child labor laws and public health services, hot and healthy lunch programs, the juvenile justice system, mandatory immunizations, arts in education, and school safety. 
And whereas the founders of the Parent Teacher Association, or PTA, Phoebe Apperson Hurst and Alice McClellan Burney, and the founder of Georgia's Congress of Colored Parents and Teachers, Selena Sloan Butler, were women of imagination and courage who understood the power of individual action, worked beyond the accepted barriers of their day, and took action to literally change the world. And whereas these remarkable individuals had a simple idea to improve the lives and futures of all children, and as much as other conditions in the nation have changed, that idea has not, as PTAs keep it alive. And whereas founded in Washington, D.C. as the National Congress of Mothers, the Parent Teacher Association celebrated the 120th anniversary of its founding on February 17, 2017. Since its inception in 1897, the organization has stood firm on its purpose of advocating for the education, health, and well-being of all children. And in recognition thereof, it is indeed deserving of the appreciation and recognition of the public. And whereas the organization meeting of the Michigan Congress in Battle Creek took place in May 19, 1918, Mrs. Charles Stewart of Battle Creek was elected as its first president, adopting a resolution urging the, Med the Michigan legislature to provide adequate health training in all of the schools in the state. And whereas today, PTA is the largest volunteer child advocacy organization in the United States, and its members represent the ethnic diversity of the nation and come from the ranks of traditional families, single-parent households, <clears throat> blended families, grandparents, and other caring adults who together continue to serve as the conscience of the country for children and youth. And whereas PTA plays a significant role in the success of Livonia Public Schools and the experiences of our children and families who make up its community through programs such as Reflections, Masterworks, Youth Making a Difference, Founders Day, and Staff Appreciation Week, as well as its members volunteering countless hours of service and support in our schools. Now therefore be it resolved that May 19, 2018 is recognized as Michigan PTA Day, commending the organization on the occasion of its 100th anniversary. Thank you, Mrs. Jarvis. Any questions or comments from the board? Mr. Centers. Uh, like my board colleagues, I'm a member of several PTA groups, and um, it's always amazing to see all the activity that's going on in our schools. As someone who worked as a classroom teacher, though, I know the people that most appreciate uh, the PTAs are the staff. Um, it, uh, the little things that make their jobs easier, that do extra, the little extras for the kids are, are tremendous and they really add up. So thank you to all our PTA families. Indeed. Mrs. Burton. I would just like to thank all of, uh, probably the majority of this room is involved in, in PTA, either currently or, or has been in the past. Uh, but one of the, the primary benefits from PTA uh, is not only the uh, added icing on the cake, as I've called it, uh, in your, uh, your children's schools, but that it gives many, many opportunities for, you, for your child to see you active in their schools. Whether that's uh, attending meetings with the PTA where they don't see you, but they see you go out the door, they know what you're going to go do, and you're taking care of the leadership of those volunteer organizations in your schools, or volunteering at the many, many events that PTAs put on each year uh, in your kids' schools during the school days or during the evenings. Uh, one of the best ways to have your children excel in school is to see their parents and guardians involved in their school. So thank you to so many of the parents and grandparents and guardians uh, who are involved in the PTAs and involved in your children's schools. Um, and the, 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 one who, the ones who will see it the most and benefit it from the most are your own kids. 
Thank you, Mr. Burton. Any other questions, comments from the board? I don't think I could have said it better. Oh, well said. So we have a motion uh, to, uh, to approve the resolution in recognition of the Michigan PTA Centennial. Uh, Mrs. Conifield, would you take the roll, please? Mrs. Jarvis. Yes. Mr. Centers? Yes. Mrs. Bradford? Yes. Mrs. Burton? Yes. Mrs. Bonifield says yes. President Johnson? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. That will take us to item 3F, LPS Points of Pride, Kappa, Creative and Performing Arts. Mrs. Jenkins? Thank you, President Johnson. My final item is sure to be a showstopper. <laughs> Um, each month during this entire school year, we have featured a special program, project, or offering that defines the word points of pride. We have highlighted so many great programs in our district during this school year and have helped raise awareness of our many offerings. Tonight, it is my pleasure to introduce to you the infamous CAPA program under the direction of Ms. Amy Hillman. Amy, if you would please join me at the podium. Oh, I'm, I, oh my goodness, Angie. Okay, so I went to school with the Hillmans as well, and Amy was in my class. So I'm not surprised that I did that. I'm sorry. Please accept my apologies. Um, okay, so sit back and enjoy a lively presentation on the Creative and Performing Arts Program that is housed at Churchill High School. And I will run your video when you can. Okay? okay, great. All right, let me get out of your way. That's okay. Good evening, I'm Angie Hillman. <laughs> are you sure? She's lovely, yes. <laughs> How lucky we are to be able to work every day in a program designed to discover, nurture, and celebrate the arts. The Creative and Performing Arts Program at Churchill High School, CAPA, is a place of self-discovery, creativity, support, acceptance, and love. We are here united as a department tonight these are my colleagues here, to showcase our amazing kids and the important and life-changing things going on each and every day in the CAPA program. First up will be a video presentation that will give you a nice overview of CAPA and what it is that we do, and after which we'll have an alum, a graduating senior, and a CAPA parent speak to you about their CAPA experiences. If you'll please draw your attention to the screens, here's our CAPA video presentation. Family, love, home, creativity, acceptance, home, family, joy, uh, doing things that you want to do without judgment, lifetime friends and amazing opportunities, self-confidence, Kappa is happiness, happiness, Ohana, Kappa means Ohana, and Ohana means nobody gets left behind. There are three strands of study in the CAPA program, vocal, dance, and acting. Some of our students are in two or more of these strands throughout the day. What CAPA offers is a chance to intensely study these areas of performance during the school day while giving students avenues in which to showcase their talents in all areas after school as well. CAPA is open to all students in the Livonia District and next year we welcome five new students through our School of Choice program. There is an audition and interview process to be accepted into the program and transportation is provided to school for all CAPA students in the district. CAPA students attend Churchill High School full-time and are able to take CAPA as elective classes all four years. CAPA productions combine theater, dance, voice, tech, costumes, love, and passion to create amazing memories for students and audiences alike. 
We produce two main stage shows per year, and all Kappa students are encouraged to audition and participate in the process. We tackle shows that will inspire, make people think, and touch their hearts. There's nothing quite like a Kappa show. Our Kappa Vocal Strand is under the direction of Ann Fisher and provides students a solid education in vocal training, ensemble singing, private voice lessons in class, and theory. Our singers compete in solo and ensemble and have had exceptional ratings. Kappa Vocal prepares many concerts throughout the year, focusing on various genres and styles. Kappa Vocal is a place where singers are trained, valued, and come away with a lifelong education and love of music. The Kappa Acting Strand is under the direction of Angie Hillman and focuses on individual expression and freedom to explore characters and stories in a creative and safe environment. Our actors write, direct, act, and explore all avenues theater has to offer. The Acting Strand performs in the Acting Showcase, featuring original material, and attends field trips to Stratford, Canada, and the Jet annually. When our actors graduate, they have the knowledge and passion they need to be successful in the field of acting. They find their voice and learn how to use it to make the world brighter through the arts. I'm not one race fighting for another. I am a part of the race, the human race. When did we get the notion that just because we have fairer skin that we should be treated as such? Fair. I was moving impossibly far, impossibly fast, and my life played back. A series of cameras and photographs and memories that I captured but didn't live. 8.44 a.m. The plane is dropping. My heart is dropping. My body is dropping. People are jumping. I'm praying. I'm waiting. I'm watching. I'm still. I'm screaming! I don't have to do this! This is happening! Oh, oh my god! Hey, Casey! Hatred is flying the plane! He's running through the street! The static on my TV is written on the windows. Aggravated anticipation populates patriotic brains because. Our Kappa Dance Program is under the direction of Wendy Kwiatkowski and prepares students to go on in the college and post-high school dance world. Our dance program allows students to choreograph, work with outside professional choreographers, travel to dance intensives at local universities, and to dance in all styles in class and on stage all four years. Our dancers commonly receive scholarships as they pursue dance as a career in college. We are so proud of our Kappa dancers. Every year, Kappa students volunteer their time and talents to Arts Camp, a day of music, dance, and acting ending with a big show with hundreds of students grades 4 through 8. We always look forward to Kappa Arts Camp. Our annual murder mystery event funds the Anna Bondi Scholarship, honoring a Kappa alum who meant so much to the program and lost her life too soon. Our students work with professional actors for a night of improv, dinner, and family. Kappa students often travel around Livonia and surrounding areas entertaining schools, retirement homes, and special events. We love to perform in our community.
Our first guest tonight is a graduating senior. In fact, he just graduated yesterday. Um, here to share some thoughts about Kappa, Cole T. Nelson. Uh, good evening. As Ms. Owen said, my name is Cole T. Nelson, and I'm a Kappa alumni as of about 2.30 yesterday afternoon. Uh, during my time at Churchill, I was in the acting program for all four years, the dance program for one year, the vocal program for one year, and then I have done an independent study with the acting program this year and an independent study in the vocal program this second semester of this year. And the thing you really need to know about Kappa is it completely changes the way you progress throughout high school. You have, as soon as you come in, a family of people you can turn to when you need anything. You need emotional support, you have these teachers, you have all these other students who know exactly what you're going through. If you're looking for help with your acting, vocal, dance skills, someone is always willing to drop everything and help teach you what they know. Be it a senior, one of the teachers, or believe me, there's a lot you can learn from the freshmen, as I know from doing it this year. Uh, or even if you're struggling financially at home, we have so many ways to like help people out, and that's something that's really incredible. Uh, talking about my own Kappa story, I only got involved in theater in middle school, starting actually with uh, Mrs. Fisher. She really just kind of shepherded me into it. I had been involved in uh, choir and singing, but I'd never done theater before. And my first theater experience was a little bit of a disaster. Long story <laughs> short, I wasn't really involved. I was helping Mrs. Fisher out on the side. And a student who was in one of her shows got suspended. I was uh, called in the day before, and I performed the show the next day, and from then on, I believe I turned to my mother, and my exact words were, I just want to keep doing this for the rest of my life. Uh, and I came into the Kappa program, and even though I knew a lot of the people, because I came with an Emerson class where we had many people coming over into the freshman class, I was fairly shy and certainly not a leader in any sense of the word. Over the next few years, being cast and working with Ms. Hillman in all of the shows and working with her in her acting class, she was able to teach me this sense of responsibility and how to grow not only as an actor but as a person. I assumed the role of who we call Kappa Dad for several <laughs> years, which is just kind of something we do in the program, being known by the underclassmen as someone they can turn to for advice and for help and for guidance through the program. But none of this would have happened without the Kappa program. It teaches you this sense of respect for your peers, for your school, for your art, and I think really most importantly, a sense of respect for yourself. And honestly, I could stand up here all day, but I know I have some other speakers that I'd like to turn it to. And honestly, I'd just like to leave with a thank you to the Kappa program. Thank you. Thank you, Cole. And now I'd like to introduce the father of one of our Kappa freshmen, um, who, Fiona. Um, and this is her dad, and he's going to share some experiences with our program. Here's Mr. Johnston. Thank you. Uh, as the parent of a soon-to-be second-year Kappa student, I can definitely attest to it being a real family, a program where mentorship is encouraged at home away from home. My daughter entered Churchill High School with the same bundle of nerves typical of any freshman, desires to fit in, social worries, the universal pressures of high school, etc. But she quickly found a place where she could be herself within the Kappa program, and this has led to a stability allowing her to succeed in all her subjects. Uh, she now carries a 4.2 GPA, and she managed to accomplish this with a very busy schedule of rehearsals and performances. Furthermore, compassion and integrity, which often seem to be in short supply these days, are innate characteristics of those involved in the creative and, and performing arts, and they are definitely stressed within Kappa. It's a wonderful place for a kid to be. Uh, from a more pragmatic standpoint, the training these kids are receiving is incredible. Uh, it's akin to what you'd see in an undergrad college program, and for those students wishing to pursue careers in the performing arts, uh, this gives a lot of them a huge jump start on their peers when they graduate uh, in terms of the practical knowledge and skills of performing arts. And it definitely shows in the confidence they display while on stage. And finally, as a resident of Livonia, Kappa puts on world-class shows in our own backyard. The last year, as you saw, they pr uh, presented the musical Cats. They're going to do Les Mis next year. These are shows that high schools don't normally produce uh, because of the vast depth of talent needed to put them on. Not to mention the more intimate plays appearing in the Black Box Theater at Churchill, like this year's Laramie Project, which everyone who saw it is still talking about. Uh, we are fortunate to have access to world-class entertainment right in our own backyard, 
and Livonia is a richer place because of this. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Johnston. And now our last speaker of the evening is a 2016 alum of the program who is now an acting major at Oakland University. Here's Kelsey Fay. Good evening, everyone. <laughs> um, I can stand here and tell you everything that Kappa has taught me on an educational level. I can tell you how I learned to become a successful actress, director, and writer at a collegiate level. I can tell you that it has more than prepared me for my future endeavors. I can tell you that it was the best elective I ever could have audi auditioned for. I can tell you that while in Kappa we covered every school subject, we change and alter stage lighting, we are constantly reading scripts and researching the history of shows, we talk about social and political issues that come up in plays and in the theater community, and while math, uh, that is a whole different beast, <laughs> but Kappa is more than just an elective, more than a high school credit, it is a family, an encouraging, supportive, ever-growing family. And like family, it is forever. I have been taught how to write, act, and become a load of fun characters, yes. But I have also learned how to accept, love, and become myself. I was always encouraged to live my truth and to tell it loud and proud. I told my truth through the pieces I wrote for the stage and still do. Kappa was a means to express myself during a time when I thought that no one was listening. It gave me a platform to showcase any thought, feeling, or idea that I was having, and it let me know that at 14, or at 20, that I was not alone. Kappa is a support system held up by peace, understanding, and love beads. I consider myself part of the family still and have no intentions of leaving. As an actor that is consistently changing character and setting, Kappa is my constant, and I know it is and will be for teenagers now and for many years to come. Thank you. Thank you to all of our speakers for sharing their thoughts tonight, and we hope you can see from our presentation that the Kappa program at Churchill is stronger than ever and providing a quality and loving performing arts education for all students. We take great pride in what we do. We hope to see you in the seats next year. We would love to have you there in our, at our shows. Um, and we welcome anyone and everyone to come see the shows, reach out, and be a part of our Kappa family. Thanks for inviting us tonight. We really appreciate being able to share with you what we do. Thank you. Comments from the board? Mrs. Jarvis. I've attended many a Kappa production. I've attended productions on Broadway, and I can't tell the difference. <laughs> and I also want to know, Mrs. Hillman, when do the tickets for Les Mis go on sale? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mrs. Jarvis. Other questions or comments? Mrs. Oquist. It uh, certainly is a remarkable program, and without a doubt, a point of pride in our district. We are so grateful uh, to each of you who lead this program and who are so committed to the kids in this program. Um, it is an absolute thrill um, to attend one of your performances, and I, can, I cannot even imagine the amount of time and effort that goes in to each and every one. I'm sure we could only scratch the surface. Um, but we are so proud of each and every person involved with Kappa, and we thank you for your dedication to the program. All right, that will move us on to item 3G, district update from superintendent, Mrs. Oquist. So I think the best thing I can say is to remind the group that after 3G, we're taking a break, <laughs> which means that you have the opportunity to choose to stay or to go. So, um, but before that, I just want to share some highlights. Um, since we had so many communication items, I've limited it to just a few um, this month, but uh, we are, again, thrilled to have each of our honorees here this evening. I'd like to thank Mrs. Jenkins for coordinating all of these special guests here tonight, truly the, the favorite part of each one of our board meetings. Um, thank you. 
we had a great weekend. Um, not just this past weekend, we've had a number of graduation ceremonies. We had each of our three high schools this past weekend, um, but we also had the Western Wayne Skill Center graduation, um, which is highlighted for you on Facebook um, that Mrs. Jenkins shared with our community and also our project search graduates um, who we had the opportunity to recognize last week. So congratulations to each of our graduates and their families. Um, what a what a just tremendous time of pride it is um, for each of for each of uh, the folks involved with that. And a huge thank you to the parents and volunteers who hosted uh, many of the senior all night parties. So those of you um, who may have been there last night are probably still feeling uh, the effects of that. Um, but we are so grateful to have a safe um, and fun-filled place for our graduates um, as they celebrate this time of year. Uh, fr last Friday, we had the opportunity um, to attend Buchanan's uh, Garden Revitalization uh, Project reopening. And so uh, a number of years ago, a special garden project was started at Buchanan. They have revitalized the area, created an outdoor classroom, have many new plantings, benches, signage, um, and special additions from the students. And they are also going to be bearing a 20-year time capsule. So this is the year that the Buchanan and Cass communities came together. Um, and they've included uh, many wonderful items in their time capsule that will be buried and will be uh, opened in 2038. Um, and it was, it was cute. As one of the teachers was talking about um, what was in the time capsule, she was telling the kids, imagine 20 years from now you can come back and some of you may be um, graduated from college, you may be working, some of you may be married. And there was a young boy standing behind her and he went, yeah. <laughs> no way. <laughs> so it's hard for them to imagine 20 years from now, um, but they've included uh, videos from each of the students. And uh, so I'm excited for them to have that memory to open uh, 20 years from now. So congratulations to Buchanan on that special ceremony last week. The rain held out, so we were able to hold that. Uh, this week, we have some uh, special days planned at Emerson Middle School, the Civil War Days. It's always a highlight of the year for our students there. Um, and so this week, they will have an opportunity to have a military uh, drill in March. Um, they will uh, celebrate blood, not celebrate, they will share uh, Bloodsoe's Battery in Civil War um, historian reenactment, and they will have an opportunity to meet the presidents on Thursday, June 7th. So uh, their social studies department does a great job of coordinating each of these pieces. It truly is um, a highlight and we're looking forward to visiting this week. Uh, congratulations to one of our Riley students, Charlotte Bohm. She is qualified to compete in the 2018 National Synchronized Swimming Junior Olympic Championship in Oxford, Ohio this month. She, was, she is a fifth grade student at Riley and she is one of the youngest um, who will be moving on for that special event. Uh, I wanted to give a shout out to Franklin JV's girls softball team. So many times we'll highlight accomplishments such as um, those winning district championships and regional championships. Um, but I have to say, um, Coach Willie Monroe from Franklin shared uh, with me that um, these young ladies on their game in late May were down 17 runs in the third inning. They came back and ended up winning 26-24 and ended up with their second best season in school history. So a shout out to uh, Coach Monroe and uh, to the entire softball, uh, JV softball team at, at Franklin. Go Patriots. Very good. Awesome. Uh, so we also wanted to just mention a couple of um, also uh, just a couple of other shout outs. Um, while Mrs. Fisher is here, I wanted to mention the special concert that we had a chance to attend at Church Hill with the ASD program and the center program concert. Um, I know that you and uh, members of the staff from those programs as well as your um, independent study students did the most phenomenal job. We were blown away by that concert. So thank you, thank you, thank you. And just another big thank you. One of the things that we um, talked about last month was how many special events were going on at each of our schools, whether it's art fairs, um, concerts, and um, music nights. I know there's a big outdoor music night um, being held at Hoover um, this evening. All of those events not only are wonderful opportunities to showcase our talented students and to bring our families together, but it is a lot of effort 
um, especially at a very busy time of the year on the part of the staff involved in putting that together. So just another shout out to all of our staff and our parent volunteers for those great events. Um, and a couple quick housekeeping items. Um, we have many employment opportunities, which is very exciting, both full-time and part-time. Um, so we've updated uh, this section on our website entitled Careers. It's one of the main tabs on the front page of our website. If you or someone you know uh, may be looking for full or part-time employment um, in our wonderful district, we would love to have you take a look at that. And then our summer edition of the dialogue will be coming out very soon, created by our awesome communications department. That will not only have highlights from many of our graduates and our accomplishments for this year, but it'll have very important information about summer registration and other information. So as you maybe have families uh, coming into your neighborhood or a new family seeking information, that is always a great, um, great newsletter to check out from the district. And we will have a jam-packed issue coming out very soon. Uh, I think that is it for this evening. So thank you so much, President Johnson. Thank you, Mrs. Oquist. You're welcome. And as we indicated, we're going to take a break. And those of you who feel compelled to leave, <laughs> you can do so. If you want to stay, we'll be here for a while. But we'll be back in about 5 to 10. Thank you. Thank you. And we are back. That was uh, outstanding to have those students and the programs here great. tonight. Awesome. Really great. We will move on to item 3H, written communications. Does anyone on the board have any written communications? No. Mm -hmm. Seeing none, we will move on to item 3I, audience communications. And for anyone who's listening, audience communication is a time that the uh, board invites the community to come in and uh, address the board. It's the time for the board to listen uh, and not engage. Uh, there are, just as a little bit of background, the board has three main duties. Uh, the first is to hire and evaluate the superintendent. The second is to set policy. And the third is to uh, set and maintain our long-term strategies. Uh, so anyone who addresses the board, if your uh, area of concern involves any of those three areas, then you might receive a response from the board. Um, the other areas are what we call our day-to-day -day operations. And if any of your comments relate to those, then your response would generally come from uh, Mrs. Oquist. Uh, audience communication is limited to 15 minutes and three minutes per speaker. We do that so that everyone gets a fair opportunity to speak. Um, I do not see any blue slips. Um, I see some folks in the audience. I, anyone who want, does want to speak, the forms are outside to the right of the door, but I'm not seeing any. So we will move on to uh, item 3J, response to audience, uh, prior audience communication. Are there any response to prior audience communications? No. Seeing none, we will move on to item 4, our consent agenda. May I have a motion, please? President Johnson. Mr. Centers. Move that the Board of Education of the Livonia Public Schools School District approve the following consent agenda items as recommended by the superintendent. 5A minutes of the meeting minutes of the regular meeting of May 7th, 2018. Support. We have a motion by Mr. Center, supported by Mrs. Jarvis. Are there any questions or comments on this item? Seeing none. Um, we have a motion to approve the consent agenda. Mrs. Bonifield, would you take the roll, please? Mr. Centers? Yes. Mrs. Jarvis? Yes. Mrs. Bradford? Yes. Mrs. Burton? Yes. Mrs. Bonifield says yes. President Johnson? Yes. Motion carries. That takes us to item 6, instruction matters. And we have one item, 6A. Uh, may I have a motion, please? President Johnson. Mrs. Burton. Move that the Board of Education of the Livonia Public Schools School District purchase the textbook Stats, Modeling the World, AP Edition, 5th Edition, 2019, for statistics and the MSc program course Advanced Topics in Mathematics from Pearson Education Incorporated at a total cost of $33,603.79. Support. We have a motion by Mrs. Burton, supported by Mrs. Bradford, for the approval of to purchase st uh, statistics textbooks. Mrs. O'Brien, you'll be addressing this for us tonight? I will. Thank you, President Johnson. Um, we are bringing the recommendation to um, 
purchase a new textbook both for our regular statistic courses and our MSc program, Advanced Topics in Mathematics. This statistics book um, follows the advanced placement guidelines which prepares students for the AP statistics exam. Our district has specific requirements for textbook adoptions as outlined in our administrative procedures of board policies. This textbook committee consisted of three high school teachers. They spent extensive time reviewing our current state standards and the common core shifts for teaching mathematics. They developed a list of what the ideal materials would have and created their evaluation criteria based on that list. It consisted of authentic real world, world problems, an integration of technology, activities and project based lessons, and a quality application problems aligned to their content. The Stats Modeling the World textbook best met their evaluation criteria out of the six textbooks reviewed. Stats had the highest overall rating and the next closest textbook scored significantly lower. The committee piloted the textbook in the two current running statistics classrooms and teachers had discussions with the students to gather feedback. Students had favorable opinions of the materials. It was then shared with department chairs and approved by the building administrators. So the cost of the statistics textbook is $33,603.79. This money has been budgeted by the secondary textbook budget. Thank you, Mrs. O'Brien. Questions or comments from the board? Mrs. Burton. Um, Mrs. O'Brien, I ask this of each text we're, we're purchasing uh, just to, to double check and to uh, let the public know. We are frequently asked about the cost of a hardcover book versus an electronic copy. Can you address this for the board? Yes. So textbook companies um, typically give you the choice of purchasing the online book and providing you with the hardcover book or purchasing the hardcover book and providing you with the online. So this um, company, Pearson, is providing the online access uh, free of charge with the purchase of the textbooks. Okay. So there's not a, there would not be a savings if we opted to just not purchase at this the, point. the electronic version? Not at this point. Okay. Not there. Thank you. Thank you. And I'd also like to thank the, uh, the number of uh, staff and the students involved in the piloting of this. Um, the, there are a, a, a great number of people who are involved in checking these books out for a period of generally a year or longer, it looks like, uh, before we make this kind of purchase. So I'd like to just extend our thanks for the folks, the folks that were involved in this. Thank you. I'll share that. Any other? Uh, Mrs. Bonifield. Mrs. O'Brien, could you uh, just maybe address the number of textbooks that are purchased, how we decide how many textbooks we purchase, and just let us know if um, that is a deciding factor in whether or not we provide a class in any particular school? So we, um, we the students have a choice of scheduling for certain um, courses in high school, and we have to make a decision based on the number of students who sign up for a course if it can run, if there's enough students to um, have in that class. So two of our high schools um, currently have statistics. One of our high schools does not. And um, having 20-year-old materials could be part of the reason. So having new materials and, and um, you know, students sharing that we have new materials could help build that up. Um, but it is one of our goals to then provide those courses, you know, as in as many high schools as we can. Um, but the number of books that we order is not going to preclude us from having yeah. additional so courses. We, we estimate how many students are registering or selecting that course, and then we can always um, purchase additional student textbooks and um, additional online licenses. So right now, this. Um, this budget is based on what our needs are for next year. Thank you. That was Any other questions or comments? As a follow-up to that, Ms. O'Brien, how many classes or sections do we presently have or will we have in the fall? We have two sections total right now this year. And we will have two statistics plus the MSC statistics. Okay, where will they be? What schools will they be at? regular statistics at Churchill and MSC statistics at Churchill and then at Stevenson. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Mrs. Jarvis. Thank you. Um, it seems that for every book that we buy, we're given access to a digital copy. 
So even if there were a mad rush of students signing up for statistics, which I think is statistically unlikely, <laughs> we would already have enough materials to accommodate them since we pretty much have twice as much as we need. At this point, yes. So we're, we, we have plenty. If we need more, we can get more for sure. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Seeing none, we have a motion by Mrs. Burton, supported by Mrs. Bradford, for the approval to purchase statistics textbooks. Mrs. Bonifield, would you take the roll, please? Mrs. Burton? Yes. Mrs. Bradford? Yes. Mr. Centers? Yes. Mrs. Jarvis? Yes. Mrs. Bonifield says yes. President Johnson? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. That moves us on to uh, business management. Uh, item 7 and 7A is adoption of the 2017-2018 final budget amendments. May I have a motion, please? President Johnson. Mrs. Bonifield. Move that the Board of Education of the Livonia Public Schools School District adopt the attached amended budgets for the 2017-18 school year, general fund, funded projects fund, athletic fund, food service fund, special education fund, debt retirement funds, the 2013 bond series one, 2013 bond series two, 2014 refunding bond, the capital projects fund, sinking fund, technology fund, capital projects fund, 2013 bond fund series two, scholarship fund, health and welfare fund. Support. We have a motion by Mrs. Bonifield, supported by Mrs. Burton. Mrs. Smith, you're going to help us with this? Thank you, President Johnson. Uh, during the March financial update, I discussed with the board the anticipated revenue collection being $2.2 .2 million higher than what we budgeted in December. At that time, we went over the reasons for the changes, those being the additional information we had on the timing of the close on the sale of some of our properties, also, that we would be receiving a large, what Risa refers to as a one-time payment to help us offset some of our transportation costs, and that we, we, we would also be in a position to transfer an additional $400,000 from the Special Education Fund. I am now anticipating an additional $400,000 on top of what we discussed in March, stemming from some increased categorical funding from the state. In March, we also discussed some changes on the expenditure side. At the time, I anticipated expenditures to be up $2.2 .2 million from our December budget amendment. I now uh, predict expenditures to be up $1.9 million. Uh, these changes in expenditures stem from the FICA expense incurred by the district on the 3% health insurance uh, refunds from the Office of Retirement Services, as well as some other fluctuations in benefit costs. We also we have also included in this budget an adjustment to the transfer to the other funds, in particular transfer to the Capital Projects Fund, so that the district can start to plan for and address the fact that our physical structures uh, need, needs exceed what we're able to accomplish through the 2013 bond as well as our sinking fund. Um, considering all of this, I'm anticipating an ending fund balance in the general fund of $19.9 million or 12.8%. Thank you, Mrs. Smith. Questions or comments from the board? Mr. Centers. So the last uh, couple of years, we've received revenue of approximately 700000 from, from RISA as far as reimbursement from transportation costs. Um, that is not something we had budgeted for, but we had received the last couple of years. Um, coming up uh, in the next year, is that something we're budgeting for? It is, Mr. Centers. Um, based on the budget that we've seen from Wayne Risa, we expect that uh, they'll be making that payment again. They have a very uh, healthy fund balance in their special, special education fund. And so it's with that in mind that we have included in our proposed budget for 1819 this one time, what, again, what Risa refers to as a one time payment um, to help us off set our special ed transportation costs. So that has been included in our 1819 budget. Should we hear uh, something differently from the county? Of course, our first, uh, at first we will of course talk to them and uh, relay the importance that this has on our uh, general fund and we'd like to see that continue. But uh, if something changes, we'll bring that update to the board. So looking at the proposed um, budget from last year, uh, we figured we'd end about 14 million fund balance and um, we came significantly higher, but as far as 
Uh, that is one way in which you are trying to kind of tighten this up a little bit. Can you describe other ways that you're trying to um, tighten up the projections so that they're, they're maybe not quite as the disparity yes. uh, between the, the proposed and our final amended? Yep, we are definitely, uh, as I go through the budget, taking a look at things line by line and um, taking a more aggressive approach to the numbers. And I, now that we're in a position that we have a healthier fund balance, we can take that more aggressive approach where we're going to still be conservative. I'm never going to put before the board something that I don't think, on this, for instance, on the expenditure side, um, a recommendation that wouldn't allow for some um, unforeseen things to happen. Um, so I anticipate, for example, that for 18 or for 17, 18, um, that our expenditures will come in better. But still, uh, by law, we aren't allowed to spend any more than what's approved by the board. So we'll always um, earmark a little uh, something for emergencies. But um, yes, we go line by line. Um, we don't want to uh, count on anything, for instance, on the revenue side uh, before we know it's there because we don't want to commit resources that we don't have. But in this case, too, with the special ed transportation payment, even though Risa calls it a one-time payment, we've now experienced it over the last three years. And again, based on what we see in their budget, we feel very comfortable including it um, in this follow-up year. Um, same on the well, something that's a one-time revenue, again, for us uh, is the sale of property. And we've gone ahead and included in our budget for 1819, uh, the sale of clay as well as the second half of Nankin going through. So anything that we do know about, we are um, trying to put uh, in the budget and again, be conservative, but not too conservative so that when we do our financial updates every quarter or our final budget amendments that we don't see such a large swing. Um, a few things can be uh, you know, come up that are unexpected. For instance, the FICA expense that was uh, about $450,000 this year. And that was something um, that was just about decided by the Michigan Supreme Court in December. So um, for us to have included that in the proposed budget wouldn't have been um, right. But now that we know that information, uh, we've included in the budget. And that, just one last thing, that is not, that, is, that was a one-time fee. That's not something we'll have to include in future budgets. Correct. Mrs. Oakley. I'd just like to add to that that um, just to, if the board may recall, and Mrs. Smith may still be going over this uh, this evening, um, but another, uh, when you, you uh, talked about the fund balance that was anticipated, there were also some larger items that we discussed at both the study session and the committee meeting um, would be carryover and um, assigned fund balance um, for purchases that would not be taking, that we would not take. Um, hold of by June 30th. So there were some anticipated uh, textbook expenditures as well as some of our bus vehicle purchase that were um, that are part of this fund balance, which we had anticipated um, spending in this fiscal year. That will be carried over as part of an assigned fund balance for next year. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Elquist. Any other questions or comments? Mrs. Burton. Yes, um, Mrs. Smith, uh, the budget that we have before us also includes uh, the contracted uh, staff uh, raises for that we had set last year for a two-year contract, correct? That's true. Yep, okay. and that's actually for our next uh, item um, in our 18-19 budget. We have included the year two of our uh, contract settlements with all of our bargaining units. Okay. Um, now this budget, because we have a healthier fund balance, uh, I assume that I'm correct uh, that we will not have to uh, take a loan out to start off our school year uh, because we have to start paying mm -hmm. our staff as as would be appropriate mm -hmm. uh, in the be very beginning of our school year but we don't begin receiving our payments from the state until October that which is, is that part is out of our control yes for a number of years we've had to do um, cash flow borrowing and we did not have to do any cash flow borrowing for 2017-18 and we will not have to borrow any money for 2018-19 so uh, that's just one of the benefits of having a healthy fund balance that we do not have to borrow. Um, another benefit of the healthy fund balance is should we um, need to go out to our public again for a bond, um, the idea that we'd get a better interest rate uh, with those healthier fund balances because there's a surety knowing that we'd be able to um, make our debt payments. Um, the idea that should there be changes in funding uh, from the state level, federal level, local level, um, a healthy fund balance would allow us to uh, weather those changes without having to make any mid-year um, adjustments in our program. Okay. Um, and do you know off the top of your head just a ballpark of what uh, it costs us to go out for that uh, cash flow borrowing? 
I I, don't I, I know. Caught, I'm catching you off guard with that question. So I, if you don't know, that's yeah. fine. You get back to us on it later. Just I curious. can tell you, though, just in the interest on there, it's tens of thousands of dollars a district would pay just for interest for those loans. Um, what we've experienced, and we've tried some different things with the cash flow borrowing. If you do a state aid note, um, they you borrow the money for the entire school year. They don't allow you to repay it. For instance, in October, when you get your money from the state, you um, take the loan out for the whole 12-month uh, term. So you're paying interest then for 12 months, even though you maybe need it for a short period. Um, so there's other alternatives for, for uh, borrowing, and I know that's what we did in 16-17 uh, so that we didn't have to pay interest on all 12 months when really we only had a smaller window um, okay. when clash flows looked like they would be low. Okay. And I know we were one of hundreds of districts in the state of Michigan that had to do that, uh, mm -hmm. but it's it's nice that, we're, that our fund balance is now in a, a situation where we don't have to spend tens of thousands of dollars in order mm -hmm. just to make it from September to October when the state begins to uh, carry through with their obligation to properly fund school districts. That's true. Well, properly is a loose That's word, true. but we'll just say fund school districts. Um, I'd also like to uh, thank everybody associated with our school district for getting us through the last several years. Um, our staff and uh, and scaling back on on items our administration for very hard work in preparing budgets uh, that are going to still uh, hold us through the recession uh, where we're finally through the 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 recession as our state and as our country knew it uh, public education funding is not caught up to where it needs to be but I'm grateful that we have a fund balance now so that if we have things, uh, we w we're continuing to have declining enrollment that we have to deal with um, on, on, a, on an absolutely annual basis. Um, we have retirement costs that are out of our control uh, but continue to go up. So even when we hear we're going to get $120 per student, we know that that does not mean $120 per student in, in our district. That means very few extra dollars per student mm -hmm. because most of that is going out for retirement or other costs that are, are, without our, are uh, outside of our control. Uh, and I sat on this board just a few years ago when we had an October $470 per student unknown cut that, ca that hit our district. Um, I am grateful to everyone involved in the school district to work for their work, for working so hard to put our fund balance back into a healthy state again so that if, that if we have these things that hit and it's they're not all if we know that some of them are going to hit we can continue to offer the programs uh, to our students that that we have have prided ourselves as a district for do, in doing for a long long time but uh, the kudos to our entire staff our entire administration and our families for for getting us through the toughest times mm -hmm. uh, and and getting us back into a situation where our fund balance is is in a healthier condition uh, so that we don't have to do things like uh, cash flow borrowing and so mm -hmm. forth. Uh, and we can, we are in a position where when these things hit, we can survive as a school district and still serve our students well. So thank you very much for all of your work. Thank you, Mrs. Burton. Mrs. Jarvis. Thank you. M Mrs. Smith, uh, firstly, I'd like to um, echo what my colleague, Mrs. Burton, has said. It's wonderful that we have a, a fund balance, a projected fund balance, that gives us a sense of um, stability, and as well as providing a safety cushion should we have any unforeseen um, mandates, uh, for lack of a better word. Or um, it also helps pro uh, save us money in terms of borrowing. We don't have to borrow to make payroll over the summer, and it helps our credit rating. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us, please, what is um, the suggested target for a fund balance? I'd be happy to. Um, the Michigan school business officials recommend a fund balance of 15 to 20 percent. Um, so we're not uh, quite there yet, but we're also charged, um, I know, with wanting to balance financial stability with also meeting the needs of the students that we have uh, with us today. So that's what this budget does, as well as the 1819 budget. It's a fine balance of financial stability, but yet meeting the needs of our uh, current students. So the recommendation by Michigan school business officials is 15 to 20 percent. Um, when we take a look at where Livonia falls uh, in relationship to the uh, districts across Wayne County, there are 33 districts in Wayne County, and I'm blanking if it's 21 or 22. We're number 21 or 22 out of 33. So that means that we've got you know, 21 districts ahead of us as far as a percentage of their fund balance. And that takes into consideration that there's different size districts. And so by looking at the percentage and 
instead of just a single dollar amount, um, that helps us get some relativity or some, yeah, gives us some perspective. So, um, although for us this is uh, huge, you know, it's nothing to say that we're totally out of the woods and everything is good. You know, we still will be, um, you know, asking our legislators to take a look at the school funding and um, trying to get adequate funds uh, to make some of these improvements. We're so excited when we take a look at the 1819 budget at some of the supports we um, have in place, but. Uh, just to imagine the things that we could do to if there was uh, just a little more so Thank you Any other questions or comments? I just wanted to make a, a an observation and a comment as I indicated at the beginning of the meeting This is a, a voting meeting and you wouldn't hear necessarily the level or depth of discussion That you would hear it at other meetings and I just want the public to understand that the board has spent hours upon hours uh, going over this, uh, particularly at our study session, where we spent, in my recollection, it was well over two and a half hours mm -hmm. alone, uh, and then at least an hour or more at the committee meeting going over this, uh, not to mention the hours that the board individually has spent mm -hmm. going over this material. So when people tune into this meeting and they, and they see sort of a cursory uh, discussion of it it doesn't cover the depth that we had gotten into uh, in prior meetings so uh, I just wanted everyone to understand that 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 has taken place all right if there are no other questions or comments we have a motion by mrs. Bonifield supported by mrs. Burton uh, to adopt the 2018-18 final budget amendments Mrs. Bonifield, would you take the roll, please? Mrs. Bonifield says yes. Mrs. Burton? Yes. Mrs. Bradford? Yes. Mr. Centers? Yes. Mrs. Jarvis? Yes. And President Johnson? Yes. Motion carries. That'll take us to item 7B, adoption of the 2018-19 proposed budgets and millage rates. May I have a motion, please? President Johnson. Mrs. Bradford? Move that the Board of Education of the Livonia Public Schools School District adopt the attached proposed budgets for the 2018-19 school year. General Fund, Funded Projects Fund, Special Education Fund, Health and Welfare Fund, Food Service Fund, 2013 Bond Fund, Series 2, Scholarship Fund, Debt Retirement Funds, 2013 Bond Series 1, 2013 Bond Series 2, 2014 Refunding Bond, Capital Project Funds, Sinking Fund, Technology Fund, Capital Projects Fund. Support. We have a motion by Mrs. Bradford, supported by Mrs. Jarvis. And Mrs. Smith, you get to address this one as well. Thank you, President. Uh, Johnson, um, as we just concluded the look at our 1718 budget, we saw that we are projecting a fund balance of $19.9 .9 million. So that's what we have to start the 2018-19 school year off with. Um, to that, uh, we will add an estimated $154.2 million of revenue. I've included in my revenue estimates the proposed $120 per pupil increase in foundation allowance allowance, which will help us offset the declining enrollment we're projecting. I've also included in, the, included in the budget the estimated changes in state categorical funding. Uh, the proposed budget also includes some revenue from the sale of property, as well as, as an adjustment in the incoming transfer from uh, the special education fund. Um, lastly, on the revenue side, I wanted to mention that our proposed budget does include an anticipated payment from Wayne Risa uh, that they refer to as a one-time payment, but that we've received for the last three years, as we uh, discussed earlier. I'm proposing expenditures of $155.3 million for the 2018-19 school year. This includes the many additional supports we propose putting into place that we discussed at length at our committee meeting on May 21st. This also includes pay raises based on our collective bargaining agreements, changes in the employer retirement contributions, increase in our insurance cost, a decrease in transfers to other funds, uh, the inclusion of the athletic expenditures that were formerly segregated in a separate fund, and the projected savings from retirement. 
And again, I wanted to mention on the athletic fund uh, that this isn't additional expenditures to the district, that this is simply um, moving the expenditures from the separate fund into the general fund, and that the only increase we see in athletic expenditures in the coming year is a result of the addition of the bowling teams and the, la the lacrosse teams. Um, so taking all this into account, I'm at Anticipating an ending fund balance in the general fund as of June 30th, 2019 of $18.8 .8 .8 million or 12.2%. Thank you, Mrs. Smith. Uh, Mrs. Oquist. President Johnson, may I take a moment? I know um, we've shared extensive information at our prior two meetings, but I, I do think for our community it would be important if we talked a little bit about the priorities because certainly the expenditures mm -hmm are growing from this current school year to next. Um, and if I may spend just a few minutes talking about um, how those priorities were established. Certainly. Um, as we shared uh, at really at the start of the Wayne County Enhancement Millage um, work, when we first went out to our community um, asking for the support of this, uh, this important millage, we had five uh, priorities. And those have continued um, to guide our, our work and our budget uh, process. The first is hiring and retaining high quality staff to work with our students each day, preserving and enhancing our programs and our offerings for our students, maintaining class size and reducing where feasible, supporting our struggling learners and students with added needs, and financial stability for our district. So those priorities certainly have been in place and have been a driving force for us. In addition to that, um, our administrative team has really gone through to create um, a detailed plan of action um, based on a review of extensive data um, as well as a needs assessment um, of our district. Therefore, we were able to establish um, the following priorities in determining how the additional expenditures um, would be designated <coughs> in the budget. The current state of reading achievement in Livonia Public Schools, the need for consistent, high-quality Tier 1 instruction every child, every classroom, every teacher, every day. The implementation of the tenants of the third grade reading bill. The importance of literacy proficiency across all grades in all content areas. The impact of students' social, emotional, and behavioral needs on learning and on classrooms. The impact of poverty and at-risk factors on our students and on our schools. And overall learning and school success. So I thought it was important that we just take a moment and reiterate um, for the community how many of these decisions were made. We are absolutely thrilled um, to be able to bring forward recommendations to the board um, and have the board consider for their approval um, supports for our students, our staff, and our schools that we will be, believe will be impactful not only academically um, but for the social, emotional, and well-being of our students, which we know is foundational. Um, and each of these priorities and each of these recommendations are based on our district's three priority areas. Um, so while we are not able to do everything we would like to do, and certainly there are far more needs that exist um, than we have funds to be able um, to allocate, um, but we believe that um, many, many steps um, forward have been taken with the recommendations uh, being made here this evening, and we are uh, very pleased to be bringing these recommendations to you. Thank you, Mrs. Alquist. You're welcome. Um, questions or comments from the board? Mrs. Bonifield. Um, I have a couple of questions, and um, I'm, Mrs. Alquist, I'm not sure if you want to address this or we want to leave this to um, Mrs. Smith. Um, uh, there's been some comments that we have um, some higher capital expenditures. Um, and if you could just address that, I know for the last 10 years or so, those expenditures, which used to be routine, as in textbooks and replacing buses and work on our buildings, um, have uh, used to be routine and we would be on the replacement cycles have been missing for the last 10 years um, and how that's affected the district and why we need to um, now that we have some of the funding begin taking over on those replacement cycles and and getting that back into the budget I'd be happy to address that um, yes, as the uh, times were lean, those were some of the first things to get cut was uh, the things outside of the classroom. So we didn't make any purchases. When we take a look at whatever, um, any 
extra purchases. So I'll start with our uh, school buses. Um, when you take a look at our inventory list, you can see a drop. We had purchased some uh, buses in 2004, a couple in 2007, and then nothing until the 2013 bond passed. Um, and then we started replacing them. And our current fleet of buses, we have 110 buses, and thankfully we were able to replace 66 of them through the 2013 bond. But that leaves 44 buses that are at the end of life. Um, these are buses that are uh, the oldest uh, fleet that is being replaced. There are 2004s, and our uh, maintenance supervisor has uh, shared with us that a study shows that the average useful life, when you look at them in a good uh, weather state, somewhere warm that doesn't have the rough winters we do, are 12 to 15 years. So these buses are um, at that, and we're in Michigan where it's you know rough conditions. Um, so what we're looking at is coming up with a capital um, a plan to to make these purchases so that we don't get hit, that we don't put it off for a decade and then have to make uh, large purchases that if we get in a regular uh, schedule um, that uh, we won't have such a large pur purchase all at once. So that's what we've done uh, now with these school bus purchases. We also had the same case with our maintenance vehicles. When there was no money, that was one of the first things to go, that everything uh, was put on hold. And so this year we were able to um, purchase nine uh, new maintenance vehicles that does bring the fleet up to uh, current and some of those older vehicles we were able to repurpose. Um, but yeah, so that's something that has been definitely put on the uh, back burner. Um, and same thing with the textbooks. We had a large gap um, in purchases for the textbooks. So that's something um, when we put these budget together, uh, put the budget together, we're look at mul looking at multi-year plans um, and looking down the road to see what things are coming around and um, including that in our planning. So that's why we do see some things that we haven't seen in the last few years coming out of our uh, general fund, um, but that are necessary purchases um, for us to be successful. Thank you. And um, I have uh, one other question. Um, it seems like um, we see, especially this time of year, we see a lot of retirements. Um, is and there's uh, a concern that um, our staff, the level of our staff experience um, is shifting. Could you just maybe address where our staff is at and um, in that regards? We actually do. I'm trying to think of where the percentages are, but a majority of our staff still are on the end of the um, salary schedule, meaning that they have a lot of experience. So um, this year when I was putting the the budget together, um, I did account for the retirements that we've had uh, so far. So as of the date when I put the um, budget together, we knew of uh, 13 teachers, for instance, that were uh, retiring. So we uh, built that retirement savings into our budget. But um, by far, we still have a majority of our teaching staff on the upper end of our uh, teaching scale, which would mean that they have uh, more experience. Thank you. Other questions or comments? <laughs> The one thing that comment that I I tend to make uh, along these lines is it appears as though we have a healthy fund balance, but as Mrs. Burton has pointed out in the past, we had a relatively healthy fund balance when the state uh, pulled the rug out from underneath our our feet mm -hmm. uh, a couple of years ago and took four hundred and seventy dollars per student. Luckily, we had a, a healthy fund balance at that time, and we were able to weather that storm. One of the reasons we have uh, a, a healthy fund balance today is the Wayne County Enhancement Millage. Mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately, because of legislation, um, I personally question whether that will be renewed when it comes around in a few years. Mm -hmm. um, if and when that, that goes away, that's going to have an impact on our budget. So we can't get too complacent mm -hmm. with uh, where we are uh, and overspend because I think our budget's going to change mm -hmm. uh, in the coming year. So we just need to be careful. Very true. And when you look at financial stability, um, I think it's easy to go to the fund balance, but when you um, you have to take other things into consideration. I know uh, when you look at what the Department of Treasury looks at for early warning districts, they're looking at do you have um, stable enrollment? And currently for the last many years, Livonia has been in a state of declining enrollment. Um, and another thing that you look at uh, would be your expenditures and your revenues. And um, 
if your expenditures are surpassing your revenues, that's something to watch. I know in the proposed budget you see here, our expenditures do um, surpass the revenue, but there was a reason for that. We started to collect that Wayne County Enhancement Millage, and we didn't immediately put uh, the new supports in place, and that was uh, intended so that uh, we could build some financial stability uh, in the district before we proceeded. So, um, and we talked about it earlier tonight, even what is the Michigan School Business Officials recommend, and it's 15 to 20 percent. So while we aren't there, we are definitely um, closer to getting there than uh, where we've been in the last several years. And, and if I recall correctly, at the committee meeting, um, there was a notation that uh, we're at about through our budget about 12.2 with a state average about 11.8 if I remember correctly and I think I asked the question if you take away the enhancement millage mm -hmm. what would our percentage be and I think your response was about 7.2 actually about 6.6 .6. okay it's even lower than that yeah so again it's showing how important that the enhancement mm -hmm. millage is Mm -hmm. We will have as we're, you know, June 30th is our uh, fiscal year end, so we'll be getting uh, new numbers uh, from the state as all the districts across the uh, state are closing their books. Uh, come fall, when we look at our financial statements, we'll again be able to look at where we stand compared to our uh, neighbors. Thank you. Any other questions? Just to follow up to, to your comment about the Wayne County Enhancement Millage, most folks in this room are aware, but in case anyone at home is not aware, for Livonia Public Schools, that equates to approximately $5 million per year. Which for is how many more years? Uh, I believe we're. We this is the third year. This is the third year of five of six okay. of six. Okay. okay, so we have three more years. Um, but but if we're we talking about a careful. exactly that's a significant uh, amount of money when we're looking at our fund balance right now. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Mrs. Bradford. I would just like to um, thank the administration and the cabinet for their really great work. Um, in the past two meetings, I know when we come to this meeting, just like President Johnson said, we've really rehashed many, many of the budgetary concerns that we have and some of the priorities and changes that we're going to make. And I really think um, that they did a good job at all levels, uh, adding, you know, um, positions or different things along the way across the board. Um, we all know, of course, we would love to. Uh, be adding lots more to our to our budgets and everything, but we just have to be cautious. And I think that you guys did a great job um, across the board uh, trying to capture um, different areas. So thank you. I, I know I, looking it over and and trying to figure out. I know I was a big proponent of um, you know the the early elementary and this literacy, and it's so important. But it's just so important, even at the secondary level, there's lots of areas that we need to work on up at, in, in both areas and across the board. So thank you for your hard work. Um, I know it's always a work in progress, and we're always uh, balancing it to make our, our district stable and, and do the best we can for our kids. So um, I thank you for that. Thank you, Mrs. Bradford. Mrs. Burton. Just one other comment for those who may not have tuned into, uh, may not have been present at our study session or tuned into our Committee of the Whole. Um, I, I'm especially appreciative, uh, Mrs. Oquist, and to the entire administrative team for not sprinkling uh, what dollars we have uh, across the district, uh, but rather trying very hard to target them to where they're going to have the most impact for our mm -hmm. students. Uh, and for anyone at home who's in, more interested in the details of this budget, I really do encourage you to uh, go on our website and listen to the Committee of the Whole meeting where it gives great detail about each area where we're adding uh, supports and why we're choosing to add them in those areas. Um, that budget can probably be redrawn 12 different ways that, that, are, that are all effective, but um, the budget that we have before us, I believe, is, is really targeting some of our areas to get the maximum impact for the dollars that we have to, like, to allocate. So thank you very much for your work on it. Thank you, Ms. Burton. Other questions or comments? Seeing none, we have a motion by Mrs. Bradford, supported by Mrs. Jarvis, to adopt the 2018-19 uh, budgets and millage rates. Mrs. Bonifield, would you take the roll, please? Mrs. Bradford? Yes. Mrs. Jarvis? Yes. Mrs. Burton? Yes. Mr. Centers? Yes. Mrs. Bonifield says yes. President Johnson? Yes. Motion carries. It takes us to item 7C, approval of Plant Moran Cressa Amendment. I have a motion, please. President Johnson. 
Mrs. Burton. Move that the Board of Education of the Livonia Public Schools School District approve the amended agreement with the owner's representative, Plant Moran Cressa, <clears throat> for the 2013 bond fund projects and authorize the superintendent to negotiate and execute final contracts with Plant Moran Cressa on behalf of the Livonia Public Schools Board of Education. Support. I heard Mrs. Bradford. We have a motion by Mrs. Burton, supported by Mrs. Bradford. Mrs. Smith, are you going to address I this am. for us? Thank you, President Johnson. Um, the construction time period and the scope of work has changed since we last amended our uh, agreement with Plant Moran Cressa. Uh, we've had additional scope of work, and we also anticipate the need for an owner's representative through the end of the calendar year 2019, whereas our current agreement with Cressa is set to end at the end of 2018. We continue to find value in Cressa's services and therefore would like the board's approval to amend our current agreement with Cressa by $253,750 and to extend the time period to December 31st, 2019. Thank you, Mrs. Smith. Questions or comments from the board? Mrs. Bonifield. I would just like to um, say that uh, Cressa has done an amazing job for us um, they have saved us an extreme amount of bond and general fund dollars um, in their work above and beyond the cost that they um, represent. Um, they have also given us a lot of added value in uh, working with us on, on different things. And uh, so I'd like to say I very much would uh, agree with this amendment and appreciate the work that they've done and glad that they're going to stay on with us. Thank you, Mrs. Benfield. Any other questions or comments? No. Seeing none, we have a motion to approve uh, the Plan uh, Moran Cressa amendment uh, by Mrs. Burton, supported by Mrs. Bradford. Mrs. Bonifield, would you take the roll? Mrs. Burton. Yes. Mrs. Bradford? Yes. Mr. Centers? Yes. Mrs. Jarvis? Yes. Mrs. Bonifield says yes. President Johnson? Yes. Motion carries. Takes us to item 7D, approval to purchase flexible furniture for Stevenson High School 2013 bond. May I have a motion, please? President Johnson? Mrs. Jarvis? Move that the Board of Education of the Livonia Public Schools School District approve the purchase of flexible furniture for Stevenson High School from Interior Environments in the amount of $70,809.61. Support. We have a motion by Mrs. Jarvis, supported by Mr. Centers. Mr. Wollenborg. Thank you, President Johnson. Um, I'd like to continue our discussion and your consideration of the flexible furniture plan at Stevenson High School, literally one of the more colorful and uh, comfortable topics we have this evening. Um, please recall, um, funds were set aside through the 2013 uh, bond for a replacement of secondary furniture. And we're in the last phase of that, uh, those expenditures, uh, the flexible furniture phase where money was set aside for, for each of the schools to create dynamic, upbeat, and com contemporary learning spaces. Um, there's two key aspects to the Stevenson High School plan. Um, the first involves a, a redesign of the entranceway of their of their LMC, and it, you know, the plan calls for 24 new computer desks, lounge type chairs with coffee tables, various bench seatings, um, um, with separate and integrated tables, some sectional sofa seating, ottomans, and, and the like. The second aspect of their plan is to, to uh, redo and a redesign of their group room in the counseling area, uh, upgrades of, of a table and chairs in that room. Um, um, uh, the, as you mentioned, the, we've used interior environments uh, for that plan. Uh, you've had a chance to review that in the packet. We looked at last week. Uh, um, I'm requesting your continuing support and approval of the Stevenson High School flexi Flexible Furniture Plan. Easy for you to say. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Wollenberg. Questions or comments from the board? Seeing none, anybody who has seen the, uh, the, the design and some of the furniture that's going to go in there is just, it's outstanding. Yeah. They're really going to be happy with yeah. 
with what's going in. And again, we'll add some of those pictures to the district website of the Stevenson That's plan. Great. And put those on there. All right, we have a motion by Mrs. Jarvis, supported by Mr. Senators, to approve the purchase of flexible furniture for Stevenson High School 2013 bond. Mrs. Bonifield, would you take the roll, please? Mrs. Jarvis? Yes. Mr. Senators? Yes. Mrs. Bradford? Yes. Mrs. Burton? Yes. Mrs. Bonifield says yes. President Johnson? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. That'll move us on to item 7E, approval of bid results for elementary music equipment 2013 bond. May I have a motion, please? President Burton, uh, Johnson. <laughs> Old Hammett's my hard to break. <laughs> move, <laughs> Mr. Sanders. So well. <laughs> move that the Board of Education of the Livonia Public Schools School District approve the purchase of elementary music equipment from Sam Ash Quick Ship Corporation in the amount of $21,039.70, and West Music Company in the amount of $77,716.30 for a total of $98,756 even. Support. We have a motion by Mr. Center, supported by Mrs. Bonifield. Mr. Archibald, you're gonna address this for us? Yes, I will. Thank you, President Johnson. <laughs> The, this long-awaited purchase is modeled after the classroom technology plan from the 2013 bond that all classrooms shall be created equal. Uh, music teacher leaders, uh, Melody Province, since retired, uh, started this work uh, more than a year ago and, and is here tonight. So since she's here, I'd like to thank her publicly for her hard work on this. Um, Absolutely. <laughs> And also Byron, Ty Byron Turner. Uh, collectively, they worked with the current uh, elementary music teachers to identify uh, the equipment needs to support the elementary music program uh, in the same manner in each music classroom uh, across the district. And so I had a previous uh, committee meeting and study session. We shared with you the list of, of equipment, and um, we look forward to your action on that item tonight. Thank you, Mr. Archibald. Questions or comments from the board? Seeing that, just one question, Mr. Archibald, you may have this information on the top of your head and you may not. How many pieces of equipment are we getting? Do you know? I do not have that off the top of my head, but I can get it for you very quickly. Okay. I know it's quite a few. Okay. All right. We have a motion by Mr. Senator, supported by Mrs. Bonifield, for the approval of bid results for elementary music equipment 2013 so bond. Mrs. Bonifield, <laughs> would you take the roll, please? Mr. Senators. Yes. Mrs. Bonifield says yes. Mrs. Bradford? Yes. Mrs. Burton? Yes. Mrs. Jarvis? Yes. President Johnson? Yes. Ooh. Motion carries. Thank you. That'll take us to item uh, eight, personnel matters. And item 8A is granting of tenure status to specified teachers. May I have a motion, please? President Johnson. Mrs. Bradford. Move that the Board of Education of the Livonia Public Schools School District accept the recommendations of the superintendent and acknowledge that 10-year status be granted to the following teachers effective on the respective date. Melinda Magulik, May 10th, 2018. Michelle Morello, May 23rd, 2018. Support. We have a motion by Mrs. Bradford, supported by Mr. Centers. Mr. Archibald, are you going to handle this? Yes, I am. I was also counting instruments. So. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like us to wait? No. Uh, no. Thank you again. The uh, teachers named have successfully met the requirements for a probationary teacher to be granted tenure, including years of service and job performance, as indicated uh, through the annual evaluation process. We are asking that the Board of Education acknowledge these individuals if, as having achieved and your status. Thank you, Mr. Archibald. Questions or comments from the board? No. Congratulations. Yes. Congratulations to them. All right. Seeing uh, we have a motion by Mr. Mrs. Bradford, supported by Mr. Centers, to grant tenure status to the named teachers. Mrs. Bonifield, would you take the roll, please? Mrs. Bradford? Yes. Mr. Centers? Yes. Mrs. Burton? Yes. Mrs. Jarvis? Yes. Mrs. Bonifield says yes. President Johnson? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. Uh, that takes us to item 8B, 
Uh, resignations. This is for our information and it does not require any action by the board. So that will take us to item 8C, uh, resolutions of appreciation for employees who are retiring. May I have a motion, please? President Johnson. Mr. Centers. Move that the Board of Education of the Livonia Public Schools School District adopt the attached resolutions of appreciation for the services rendered by Terry Andrews, Beth Bidell, Sheffy, Linda Demers, Joan Haber, Linda Leventis, and Michael Bigalori. Support. We have a motion by Mr. Center, supported by Mrs. Jarvis. Mr. Archibald, to you again. Yes, thank you again. Uh, tonight we bring before you the names of six uh, staff members who will be retiring. These individuals leave with a combined 146.4 years of experience. That's an average of 24.4 years. On behalf of the district, I'd like to thank these individuals for their years of dedicated service to the students of Livonia Public Schools and ask that the board adopt the attached resolutions of appreciation in their honor. Thank you, Mr. Archibald. Questions or comments from the board? Mrs. Burton. Um, as, ha as happens on likely every single retirement list that this board approves. Uh, there are the names of, of teachers on there that uh, have touched the lives of, of us individually as board members and certainly as members of, of the rest of the folks who are present in the room this evening. And uh, we have some phenomenal educators. Uh, we, we applaud their ability to go on to their next chapter of their life, but we will certainly be seeing a hole that they leave behind because they've been wonderful uh, educators for our students. So I'd just like to thank them for uh, not only teaching their subject matter, but also being important individuals in the lives of our kids. Thank you, Mrs. Byrne. Other questions or comments? I just wanted to give a quick shout out. You may recognize the first name on the list, Terry Andrews, and uh, he has been a long time building supervisor in this district and just completing his 42nd year. Yeah. You may remember wow. that just uh, the young man a couple years ago came and received the beautiful 40-year uh, yeah. um, yes. commemorative uh, yes. bowl that is gifted to our, our staff um, who show that uh, level of dedication and commitment. And uh, so certainly wanted to acknowledge that you don't often uh, see that length no. of uh, oh, tenure sure. um, for a staff yeah. member in the district. So he is um, w in going to enjoy a well-deserved retirement, I am certain. And we certainly wish all of our colleagues on this list uh, the very, very best. Thank you, Mrs. Elquist. Other questions or comments? Seeing none, we have a motion by Mr. Center, supported by Mrs. Jarvis, uh, to accept the resolutions of appreciation for employees who are retiring. Uh, Mrs. Bonifield, would you take the roll, please? Mr. Centers? Yes. Mrs. Jarvis? Yes. Mrs. Bradford? Yes. Mrs. Burton? Yes. Mrs. Bonifield says yes. President Johnson? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you, Mrs. Bonifield. That takes us to item 8D, notification of discontinuance of teaching contracts. May I have a motion, please? President Johnson. Mrs. Bonifield. Move that the Board of Education of the Livonia Public Schools School District accept the recommendation of the superintendent that the teachers as listed be laid off for the school year 2018-19 and that their teaching contracts not be renewed at the end of the 2017-18 school year. Be it further resolved that the Board of Education direct the secretary of the board to send a letter to each of the individuals listed, officially notifying them that their teaching contracts will not be renewed at the end of the 2017-18 school year and that they will be laid off as teachers in the Livonia Public Schools School District. Support. We have a motion by Mrs. Bonifield, supported by Mrs. Bradford. Uh, Mr. Archibald. Yes, thank you, President Johnson, and, and we acknowledge that, that this is a difficult item to, to bring forward. Uh, we know that being laid off is a uh, difficult situation for the individuals impacted. It's not a situation that, that we take lightly and that we've worked very hard as an administration to uh, keep the necessary layoffs to a minimum. Uh, the names being recommended to you tonight are the names of uh, all um, teachers who are all in the shared time program. Uh, there are two primary reasons for this. Uh, one, and it's not atypical, 
uh, for this time of the year, but uh, Karen Ling, who oversees that program, and Mr. Willenborg are still working with our area parochial schools to establish their course offerings uh, for the coming year. Um, so there's a certain degree of, of uncertainty there while that's being finalized, um, but also uh, probably a, a more significant impact this year uh, than any other is the closing of an area high school, uh, parochial high school. Uh, that represented uh, 40 FTEs uh, decline, decline in that program, which is about 20% of the FTE um, for that program. So uh, while we um, determine what impact that will have, it was necessary to, to lay off the teachers list. And so again, um, we do look forward to getting things finalized and bringing back as many of those individuals as possible, uh, as swiftly as possible. Thank you, Mr. Archibald. Any questions or comments? Mrs. Jarvis. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Archibald, uh, you mentioned that these are shared time employees. Would you please explain what a shared time employee is? Yes, uh, we provide uh, a number of uh, non-core or non-essential classes to area parochial schools. Um, and so our teachers, uh, they're, they're employed by Livonia Public Schools. They go out to our area parochial schools and provide such courses as art, physical education, computers, uh, advanced math, um, world language, um, and um, we get a prorated FTE uh, for each of those, those students in our program. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Jarvis. Other questions or comments? Mrs. Burton. Um, yes. Um, just again, so that the public is aware, uh, if a teacher has a, a say, a full-time position right now but may go to an eight-tenths position uh, next fall, what we have to do is go through the process of officially laying them off of a full-time and coming back as, as an eight-tenths, or even if we're unsure if that eight-tenths is going to remain in the fall. Uh, we have to go through the official process of laying off right now and then calling back. Uh, so I understand that a good number of the folks on this list are, are very likely to be called back. We just have, have to... Uh, go through this process and this is part of the process that's correct okay and also uh, this is the first time in my nearly 10 years on the board uh, that we have uh, exclusively shared time employees on this list and we don't have any of our full-time Livonia Public Schools district teachers uh, for lack of a better term on this list it's the best of my knowledge that I can recall and I also know that we do not have any current uh, k-12 teachers on layoff Okay. We covered that in our last meeting. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Burton. And Mrs. Oquist, did you have uh, something to add? Uh, surprisingly, yes. Uh, <laughs> I, <laughs> <laughs> no, I, we, uh, this, is, this is an item that is uh, probably one of the most difficult for the board, certainly, and without question for the administration. Um, and I really wanted to reiterate Mrs. Burton's message. While we would like to see this list at zero, um, we do hope to bring back uh, a number of our shared time um, staff who provide a very important educational service in our community at our parochial and private schools. Um, but we are very, very pleased um, this year to be bringing forward uh, no teachers in our uh, pre-K, um, K-12 or post-secondary um, program. And again, that is for, for many, many years, I do not recall um, us being in a position to do that. And that uh, took a significant effort on the part of our HR department, I'd like to thank them for working all the way up through uh, today um, as we put bits and pieces together of staffing um, to be able to finalize some of those pieces. Um, certainly to be within a declining enrollment uh, state within the district and be able to maintain the staffing that we have is uh, thanks in no small part um, to the budget recommendations that we brought forward to you um, this evening um, and the commitment that we have um, you know, to our students and to our schools and to our staff. So we are grateful for the board's support of this budget. Um, and uh, well, again, while we would like to be bringing uh, no names to you this evening, we are very, very pleased to be bringing um, just a very limited number of names. And again, for the first time in, in many, many years, um, no teachers from our pre-K through post-secondary uh, program. Thank you, Mrs. Elquist. Any other questions or comments? Mr. Centers. Um, can you tell us how many individuals are on the list? Yes. On the shared time list? Uh, 14. 14. 14. 14. All set, Mr. Sanders? Yes. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? 
Seeing none, we have a motion to accept the notification of discontinuance of teaching contracts by Mrs. Bonifield, supported by Mrs. Bradford. Um, Mrs. Bonifield, would you take the roll, please? Mrs. Bonifield says yes. Mrs. Bradford? Yes. Mrs. Burton? Yes. Mr. Centers? Yes. Mrs. Jarvis? Yes. President Johnson? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you, Mrs. Bonifield. It takes us to item 8E. A teacher recall authorization. May I have a motion, please? President Johnson. Mrs. Jarvis. Move that the Board of Education of the Livonia Public Schools School District accept the recommendation of the superintendent and authorize the superintendent or her designee to begin as soon as circumstances permit the recall procedure for teachers who are on layoff. Set authorization not to exceed the 2018-19 staffing guidelines. Support. We have a motion by Mrs. Jarvis, supported by Mr. Centers. And we'll go back to Mr. Archibald. Yes, thank you again. Uh, the authorization, if approved, will allow the administration to recall uh, teachers in an expeditious manner. And once letters of recall have been issued to the staff members, the list of teachers who accept the positions offered are presented to the board for formal uh, ratification. Thank you, Mr. Archibald. Questions or comments from the board? Seeing none, we have a motion by Mrs. Jarvis, supported by Mr. Centers, uh, to uh, accept the teacher recall authorization or to approve it. Um, Mrs. Bonifield, would you take the roll, please? Mrs. Jarvis? Yes. Mr. Centers? Yes. Mrs. Bradford? Yes. Mrs. Burton? Yes. Mrs. Bonifield says yes. President Johnson? Yes. Motion carries. It takes us to item 8F, authorization to accept resignations. May I have a motion, please? President Johnson. Mr. Centers. Move that the Board of Education of the Livonia Public Schools School District authorize the superintendent or the designee to accept employee resignations on its behalf for the 2018-19 school year. Support. We have a motion by Mr. Centers, supported by Mrs. Burton. Mr. Archibald. Yes, thank you again. Uh, in order to expedite staffing and related personnel matters, it is frequently desirable to act on employee resignations between regularly scheduled board meetings. Uh, this has been a long-standing uh, practice within the district and the board uh, has approved annual recommendation enabling the superintendent or the designee to in accept employee resignations and then to report such resignations at a subsequent uh, board meeting. It's the opinion of the administration that this process has worked well over time uh, and support using the same rationale would <coughs> recommend the board extend uh, this authorization an additional year. Thank you, Mr. Archibald. Uh, questions or comments from the board? Yep. Seeing none, uh, we have a motion by Mr. Center, supported by Mr. Mrs. Burton, to uh, accept the uh, authorization to accept resignations. Uh, Mrs. Bonifield, would you take the roll, please? Mr. Centers? Yes. Mrs. Burton? Yes. Mrs. Bradford? Yes. Mrs. Jarvis? Yes. Mrs. Bonifield says yes. President Johnson? Yes. That motion carries. All right, that will take us to item nine, hearing from board members. And the first item we have is item A, uh, second reading and adoption of board policy. May I have a motion, please? President Johnson. Mrs. Burton. Move that the Board of Education of the Livonia Public Schools School District accept the recommendation of the Policy Committee and adopt Board Policy language per the attached document for Board Policy JGCB immunizations. Support. We have a motion by Mrs. Burton, supported by Mrs. Jarvis. Dr. Terrio. Good evening, President Johnson. This policy on immunizations has been brought before the Board at a study session a committee of the whole, and at a regular board meeting. The revision of this goal was to remove the word inoculations. We recommend that this policy revision to the board for your adoption. Thank you, Dr. Terrell. Any questions or comments from the board? No. Oh, this is a pretty simple <laughs> change to the policy. Yes, it is. So we have a motion by Mrs. Burton, supported by Mrs. Jarvis, uh, to accept and approve board policy JGCB immunizations. May, uh, would you take the role, Mrs. Bonifield? 
Mrs. Burton? Yes. Mrs. Jarvis? Yes. Mrs. Bradford? Yes. Mr. Centers? Yes. Mrs. Bonifield says yes. President Johnson? Yes. Motion carries. That will take us to item 9B, and this is the first reading of board uh, a number of board policies. So I'll turn it over to Mrs. Smith. Thank you, President Johnson. Um, the proposed changes found in these first six policies under the fiscal management section of our board policies don't change the spirit of the policies, but instead are uh, intending to clarify the intent of the policies. Um, would you like me to go through? Can yes. you discuss each one? Please. Um, our first policy is uh, fiscal manage under fiscal management is goals and objectives, policy DA. And here we're recommending a change of one word um, under the second uh, point, uh, changing the word uh, only to primarily, so that that uh, point reads, provide a system to ensure that the resources of the school system will be safeguarded and used primarily for the benefit of students of the system. Any questions or comments on uh, that change? Mrs. Burton. Uh, yes, just for the, for the public that may not have uh, tuned into our conversation. There are a few times that resources are used for our community, but not necessarily directly our students. One example is that we have policy that if our school buses are not in use, but they are needed for an emergency purpose for our for our city of Livonia, that the superintendent has the authority to authorize our school buses for emergency use for the city. That's just one example of why we change this word from only to primarily. Thank you, Mrs. Burton. Any other questions, comments, Mrs. Bonifield? M Mrs. Smith, um, I know you mentioned that um, the spirit of these are not going to shift. Are we changing this word in order to move any of our funding to uh, other um, areas where it's not going to benefit this? No. No changes in uh, how our budgeting process works. Um, we aren't ch planning to move any funds away from the students uh, that are currently going to them. Thank you. Any other questions or comments on this change? No. Okay, moving um, on. Next policy uh, is currently policy DCA, but we're proposing changing that to policy DB, and the title is Budget Goals and Objectives. Um, just a few uh, changes here, but I can uh, read through it. Um, the first is a change from the word should to shall, so that the opening line is the budget of the school district shall. Um, in the first uh, bullet point, we are simply moving up some of the wording found on uh, bullet point number three up to number one, so that it reads, uh, number one, provide information on the educational activities for which public funds are being expended and the cost thereof. Um, we aren't proposing any changes to number two that reads, ensure the continuance of this educational program for the budgeted period of time. Number three, uh, just a little bit of rewording to say, um, so that it reads, be regarded as an important public relations instrument as it communicates the prior prioritization of resources. Uh, no change to number four, which reads, serve as a means of financial control. Um, a change to number five, five, so that it would read, provide the Board of Education and Administration with the authority to make expenditures within the approved budget to support the educational programs. And then uh, no changes for the remaining three points, uh, number six being, Serve as a basis for determining the amount of revenue which must be obtained from local taxation. Seven, serve as an instrument that will facilitate accurate estimates of future expenditures. And lastly, number eight, serve as an instrument by which the board may study the expenditures of the district by budget categories, thus enabling them to better evaluate individual projects. Any questions or comments on these changes? No. Seeing none, we can move on. Um, our next policy is currently policy DCC, which we're recommending changing to policy DC, uh, the title, Budget Preparation and Adoption. Um, and the reason for including that uh, and adoption is because we are including, um, we are proposing combining some of the later policies into this uh, policy DC, Budget Preparation and Adoption. Um, so we've got one change in the first paragraph so that it reads, it shall be the responsibility of the superintendent to have prepared prior to the beginning of the fiscal year a tentative budget for the following school year. This tentative budget shall include all the anticipated revenues and expenditures for the coming school year. No changes to the second or third paragraph. Um, in the fourth paragraph, uh, some minor changes. At this 
so that it reads as this public at this public hearing the board shall provide copies of budget summaries for the general public utilizing the state's school accounting codes it is further the intent of the board that these same copies shall be available to the public one week prior to the budget review meeting um, in the next uh, paragraph we propose changing the word boards from to districts so that it reads the Board of Education shall adopt the budget at a formal board meeting. The superintendent shall provide periodic reports to the Board of Education, which show the status of all the, the district's funds in the various state school accounting codes. In the last sentence, no change there, so that it continues to read copies of the final adopted budget shall be available at the Board of Education office and on the district's website. Thank you, Mr. Smith. Questions or comments? Mrs. Bonifield. Uh, Mrs. Smith, in, uh, in the paragraph at this public hearing, the board shall provide copies of the budget summaries for the general public. We're changing the wording from the state code classification to utilizing the state's school accounting codes. Um, are we proposing that we're doing a, a change of how we're reporting? Nope. The uh, current format of the budget will remain the same. Uh, the terminology by state code classification is antiquated, so we're looking to update that so that the readers of the board policy know exactly what we're referring to, and that would be the 1022 accounting manual put out by the state that we will uh, continue to follow what's uh, outlined in the 1022 accounting manual from the state. Thank you. And then... Uh, down at the bottom, there's a, a legal reference. Mm -hmm. um, can you just uh, let us know what that legal reference refers to? Yes, the legal reference uh, in the state law. Um, state law does require uh, certain things as they're outlined in this uh, policy. For instance, the state law requires that we have a budget uh, adopted by the board before July 1st. Um, the state law also requires that we have a public hearing prior to the adoption of the, um, the board approval of the budget. Um, and so what we've uh, done is specified down at the bottom what uh, legal, what laws we are referring to, but that we did want to include that in the board policy so that the readers um, know exactly what we're talking about without having to go to the um, law to see what we're following. Thank you. Other questions or comments on this particular policy? Okay, seeing none, go to the uh, uh, next. Um, so as we discussed in uh, policy DC, um, this next policy called budget publication slash public review, currently DCDA, we're proposing combining that with policy DC, therefore it can be removed. Mm -hmm. Okay, questions or comments? Yeah. Seeing none? Perfect. Uh, that would be the same case with our next policy, currently policy DCE, final adoption of budget. About of budget. Again, we're not proposing eliminating this verbiage, but instead including that with policy DC and then removing um, policy DCE. Okay, very good. Questions and comments? Seeing none, so we go to our last amendment. Sounds good. Um, our last board policy, policy is currently uh, DCI, and just so that it uh, flows with the rest of the policies that we've just gone over, we're recommending uh, calling that policy DD. Um, the title is Line Item Transfer Authority, um, and I'll read through this. Again, uh, the intent wasn't to change the intent of the policy, but so that the readers of the policy clearly know um, what the district's uh, stance on this is. So I'll read through this with the uh, changes. No Board of Education member or employee of the school district shall expend any funds or obligate the expenditure of any funds except pursuant to appropriations made by the Board of Education through the budget and keeping with the fiscal board policies adopted by the board. Changes in the amount appropriated by the board shall require approval by the board. The superintendent is charged with the general supervision of the execution of budgets adopted by the board and shall hold accountable the employees of the school district who are responsible for those budgets and for adhering to fiscal board policies. Commiserate with this charge and for the purpose of meeting emergency needs, the superintendent is authorized to transfer between codes an amount not to exceed $50,000 prior to approval by the Board of Education. Thank you, Mr. Smith. 
Uh, one item to point to, uh, one of the words uh, changed in this policy is from department heads to the employees of the school district, and that is because we have certain employees in the district that wouldn't be considered department heads, but that do have responsibility over um, budget line items. So we want to include everybody that has responsibility over a budget that they will be held accountable to follow uh, the board policies and to stay within their budget. Thank you, Mrs. Smith. Questions or comments? Mrs. Bonnerfield. Um, Mrs. Smith, uh, adding on to what you um, what you just stated, um, when we change from department heads to employees of the school district, does that mean that just any random teacher can uh, work on you know you spend money from the budget, or is nope. there? Uh, nope. And this again too would be um, making sure that the policy aligns too with our current practices. Um, so not every employee has a budget line item. Um, and typically it is our, uh, like a building administrator or principal that would oversee that. But we do have certain folks, um, for instance, a coach might have a, a, a line item for his sport. Again, he wouldn't be considered a department head, but he does have responsibility over his um, budget. So we're not adding a bunch of people to l budget line items. We're just changing the verbiage to include things like coaches and other things that might not necessarily be exactly department heads that is correct okay thank you and i just i'd like to just add and point out on that piece that um, beyond saying shall hold accountable employees of the school district it goes on to say who are responsible for those budgets right. and for adhering to fiscal board policies so it specifically relates back to employees of the school district who have specific re responsibility for the budgets with which they are entrusted, as opposed to simply generally the employees of the school district. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Oquist. Other questions or comments? Uh, the only other piece is uh, we did review, um, the, the board had asked if um, the $50,000 um, authorization to transfer between codes was a sufficient um, dollar amount um, for the superintendent to approve um, prior to approval by the board. Um, in review of um, utilization of this authority, um, we do not see any need to make a recommendation um, to have that amount uh, be increased. Uh, even though this policy was first put in place in 1988, um, in our practice and in my experience, uh, that, that amount is still sufficient. Okay, so we you. did review that. Thank you, Mrs. Alquist. You're welcome. Any other questions or comments? Mrs. Bonifield. Um Mrs. Smith, can we go back to eliminating DCDA? Yep. Um, can you just, I, I know that you mentioned that uh, this might be in some of the other verbiage. Is um, removing DCDA going to eliminate or make us less transparent? Not at all. Nope. We, um, again, this exact verbiage is included in uh, policy DC, and we will still continue to follow the law just as we've done tonight, holding a public hearing um, before any budget is, for the coming school year is adopted, and also to go over our uh, proposed tax millages and tax rates. Great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Other questions or comments? I want to go back to the last DD, mm -hmm. and it's, it's just a, a wording. In the first paragraph where we say, in keeping with the fiscal board policies adopted by the board, it just sounds a little cumbersome. Redundant? Re maybe redundant. It, how about if we say, in keeping with the fiscal policies adopted by the board? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's fine with me. Does that, does that work for everybody? Mm -hmm. That works for me. Mm -hmm. Okay, if we can just make that change then. Okay, anything else? All right. Seeing none, then that will uh, take us to item 9C, establishment of dates for organizational meeting and first regular meeting for 2018-19. Uh, may I have a motion, please? President Johnson. Mrs. Bradford. Move that the Board of Education of the Livonia Public Schools School District hold its annual organizational meeting at 6.45 p.m. on Monday, July 23rd, 2018 in the boardroom 15125 Farmington Road, Livonia. Further, that a regular board meeting be held directly following the organizational meeting and commencing at 7 p.m. Support. We have a motion by Mr. and Mrs. Bradford, supported by Mr. Centers. 
Mrs. Oquist, uh, you're going to address this for us? Yes, thank you, President Johnson. Uh, as reviewed at our May 14th study session, and again at our May 21st Committee of the Whole meeting, we reviewed um, with the board a proposed calendar of meeting dates established by President Johnson and myself um, for the 2018-19 school year. Uh, the first step uh, toward adopting that calendar is to establish our annual organizational meeting and as well as the first regular board meeting of the year. Therefore, I bring the recommendation to you that we hold our first organizational meeting um, on July 23rd at 6.45 p.m. in the boardroom, followed by our first regular board meeting of the new school year uh, at 7 p.m. immediately following the organizational meeting. Thank you, Mrs. Oquist. Any questions or comments from the board? Seeing none, we have a motion oh, by Ms. There is Kim. one. Oh, I didn't see you. Came up late. Mrs. Bradford. Sorry. Mrs. Mrs. Oquist. Yes. Hi. Hi. Um, I'm this is I'm blindsiding you with this question, so That's okay. I can get I'm the ready, answer. Mrs. Bonifield. Uh, the answer later. Um in I seem to remember in some of our board education classes that we are no longer required to have an organizational meeting but that we um, set that meeting aside and, and still continue to have that meeting um, it, just for transparency and to make sure that uh, individuals know that it's a separate, you know, planning set or that we're doing the calendar and stuff to draw that mm -hmm. out as a separate item. Is Am I incorrect in that or? I do not believe you are incorrect. However, it's been the practice of this board to utilize that meeting uh, to go through that process. Um, if you'd like us to to further um, look into that particular piece, um, it's it's an annual process that the board has continued to do okay. um, as part of our um, process to let the um, community know that um, in addition to it being a normal board meeting, an organizational meeting indicates that we're preparing to set the dates in the calendar for the following school year. Um, and it's just another opportunity for, as, as we do with, for instance, the public hearing we had tonight um, or the annual um, uh, establishment of officers. It just allows the community to know that that's a particular, that's a special meeting um, where we're preparing for the coming school year. Wonderful. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Any other questions or comments? Seeing none, we have a motion by Mrs. Bradford. Supported by Mr. Centers to establish dates of organizational meeting and first regular meeting of 2018-19. Mrs. Bonifield, would you take the roll, please? Mrs. Bradford? Yes. Mr. Centers? Yes. Mrs. Burton? Yes. Mrs. Jarvis? Yes. Mrs. Bonifield says yes. President Johnson? Yes. Motion carries. That brings us to item 9D, hearing from board members. And over the last meeting or so, we have... Uh, sort of changed our uh, procedure for doing this. Um, we, we sort of got into a, a bit of a rut where all we did was rehash everything that happened at the meeting. Um, and we have a report from Mrs. Oquist that takes care of a lot of uh, those types of things. So uh, we're going to open it up uh, to the board and any comments that they, they want to make at this point. Mrs. Bradford. Yes, thank you, President Johnson. I'd just like to give a shout out to the um, elementary schools in this district who opened their doors to the graduates for their, um, they came back to um, visit, revisit their elementary schools and they did clap outs and uh, other, had some other exciting photo opportunities with their former teachers. Um, I thought that was a wonderful, I think it's a wonderful gesture on the part of uh, the elementary schools and the students for the young students to see uh, the the older students come in and there were so many great um, videos and things that I saw online that I thought were just fantastic and I think it's a win-win for uh, both the seniors and uh, the young students so thank you for doing that and for allowing those students the graduates to come in and revisit uh, their old stomping grounds. I, I, it was just really great. So um, I just want to shout out to the principals for that. Uh, we really appreciate it. Thank you, Mrs. Bradford. Other questions, comments? Mrs. Bonifield? Um, I'd just like to thank um, the high schools for allowing us to participate in their graduation ceremonies. Um, Mr. Johnson pointed out that this was the first time in, in quite some time 
um, that all seven board members were able to uh, participate in all three graduations. Um, and it's just a wonderful experience. We love to see the kids and the smiling faces. Um, and it just is a wonderful opportunity for us to, you know, say thank you and just get one more chance to, to, to be able to um, congratulate our kids, our, our students on um, their accomplishments. Thank you, Mrs. Bonnefield. I did want to acknowledge on behalf of all the high schools that 100% attendance of the board members and express our gratitude and acknowledgement uh, um, uh, for that. It's uh, certainly uh, a small sign of, it's not a small sign of your dedication to, uh, to this school district and our students. Thank you all very much. It's not expected every year, uh, but certainly it, it's it's yes, that's great. But it's I, a full house. I do have to exciting. say that it was really nice for me. I didn't, I, I don't think that we get noticed that much, but it was really noticed by um, uh, the the principals and the kids that we were all there to support them, and so um, that was really nice for me to just know that you know it it really is something that they appreciate um and that it's just it's a great opportunity thank you for your time mrs jarvis thank you i'd like to give a shout out to all of our graduates we hear a lot about the ones with the uh, the honor roll or the um the special kids that were here tonight but we had the majority of our children go unrecognized and their accomplishments are no less real so a shout out to everybody. Yeah. Thank you. This is Bernie. Um, and along the lines of graduation season, um, I would just like to encourage our, our parents in our district and our seniors to watch out for one another. Uh, we're going into graduation party season, which has always got its, uh, a handful of additional risks to it. Um, parents, please do watch out for what's going on uh, in your own homes and with your kids. They're almost in college, they're almost out in the workforce, but they're not quite there yet. Mm -hmm. So please do be very careful. Uh, students, watch out for one another, and please make sure that, that you're making wise decisions, that you're taking good care of yourselves so that you make it to the fall and all the wonderful things that your next chapter has to offer for you. Thank you, Mr. Burton. Other questions or comments? I just wanted to take an opportunity to uh, recognize all of our students. This has been a particularly tough uh, semester for all of our kids. Um, they, st they stood up and uh, showed maturity uh, in the way they handled uh, the events that had taken place in Florida. Um, I think Mr. Archibald said, our future is in good hands with these kids. Um, and I just wanted to thank each and every one of them for the way they, they handled it, particularly the seniors the way uh, you showed outstanding leadership uh, in controlling the situations uh, and the way you went about uh, all of your activities. So thank you uh, on behalf of the board for doing that. Anything else? We've come to the end of the agenda, and if there is no other business uh, this evening, we are adjourned. Thank you. <laughs>